I don't have to sign up from Twitch to the chat. Haha. <laughs> yeah, careful, uh, by default they plays the video. <laughs> yeah, it's some like wicked that. audio. I played some Netflix commercial or something. Yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. But you're playing League of Legends? Oh, uh, you're a League of Legends player? I don't want to talk about it. I'm out. <laughs> have a great day. <laughs> yes, we are big on mobile. When we first started out, that was, our show was practically the mobile show. We've diversified since those days, though. I just know League of Legends from Reddit, and every time I'm in that, they're, <laughs> they're not nice people. Yes, I will say that uh, <laughs> League of Legends is the most caustic community out there, even though it's a great game. They're it's... very protective of it. Yeah, which is stupid because you, if you want a game to grow, you gotta kind of check the elitism on the door at the door, you know. Dude, you didn't do your you didn't do your 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 countdown in your episode. You didn't do all your talk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't do your you didn't do your talk. You didn't do your episode ten, and you didn't say the title. You didn't you didn't I, say I nothing. I did. Okay, episode ten. <laughs> Brains and smoke paprika, but see, Sean and Matt derailed me. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, what? I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm used to a counting, man. So I, I, <laughs> well, I mean, pre I mean, the pregame doesn't matter. Oh, okay. Obi's gonna over here. All right, here we go. We're gonna get ready to start here, guys, in a second. Three, two, one. I shut up, dude, and I wasn't paying attention. Roger. Rabbit. Fun. Now that, kind of, kind of sad, Obi. Else you won't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Yogi, man, dude. I, it, it's, it's just been an honor since uh, Fred Roja introduced us, man. And it's, uh, it's been a joy having you as a friend. Aww. He was on the episode where, where I ate uh, all that soap. Yeah, that's not a proud moment. <laughs> What is Mariana doing? We gotta be quiet, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like waving my hands like, shut up! Best start ever. Exactly. All day long. Okay. <laughs> ADHD. So? Oh, man. And welcome back, Horseplay Episode 10. And guess what? We're talking some zombies today. Uh, yeah. yeah, that didn't even... Yeah, we're not even going to go there. Welcome back, guys. This is Horseplay Episode 10. The And I got to get to the show notes because, yeah, I didn't... I did read them. I did. I promise. <laughs> Yogi, every every week he's like, nice. "Dude, did you read the show notes yet?" Yes, I read them. We'll read them again because I just added a bunch of sh stuff. So See I have to actually quick. look several times. You know, probably about twenty times during the week because he changes them that much. What? You know what? I wish you were caught up on The Walking Dead. Could I use something straight out of the show right now? Liar. Yeah. Oh, you're not caught up on The Walking Dead. How I'm sorry. Just, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. It's the zombie time. show, dude. Dude, like, I, dude, dude. I, hey, I'm sorry. That's all I can. Start. No, that's all I can do is say I'm sorry. Well, it's not enough, Obi. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I'm tr trying to play the part of the. For those that are, for those that are actually listening on the podcast, I'm flipping them off right now. He is. He really did it too. I did. Just because they can't see it. Whatever. Okay, we have right here. Anyway, let's get back to it. Host right here, you will be one X2. And right next to me, we got a little bit set up. We got a couple of different things we're doing today this week. We got Yogi Yogizilla right next to me. And then up in the top left corner of the overlay here, we got Freeman Daddy. Hello. Hello, how's it going? The pimp. 
and he's yeah. uh, one of the hosts of ZombieCast Radio. Did I say that right? Is it is it ZombieCast Radio? Empire. Yes, yes. ZombieCast yeah. Empire. That's right. It's ZombieCast. Zombiecast. Uh, we're the unofficial guide to all things zombie. And horror. <laughs> and horror. And right above me, we have Matthew Bradford. We don't, I don't have your name yet. I really don't. You're you're actually that way for me. You know. Yeah, I'm gonna do this all podcast. No, let's just Not let's just high five, five. You know, and just five it. You know. <laughs> raise, raise the roof up. I'm just gonna push them down. Exactly. <laughs> it, well, but Matt's, on, but Matt's on the podcast of all podcasts, video game outsiders also. I consider yep. the podcast the podcast. Yeah. And that is, yeah, uh, um, and we all have Twitters, um, at Obi-1X2, at YogiZilla, at FreemanDaddy5, and at Moto McFly, Motto McFly? Motto McFly. Motto McFly? I, I said it like three different times and said it all wrong, so it's all good. But anyway, the title, the title of this show is we're actually going to, it's called, and Yogi came up with this, by the way, Brains and Smoked Paprika. That's a callback to the episode with uh, we did with uh, on Knuckleballer Radio. Sean is also on. Right. Where, uh, he has to taste soap, and then we talked about seasoning too. We had a whole episode, well, a whole little segment about seasoning. And uh, that's Eli Sadoom, who was supposed to be here, so I should get Eli to join us. Well, you know, Eli got cir- Eli got circumcised this week, so you know he's been, <laughs> he's been kind of tiptoeing around. You know, the last two episodes of Knuckleballer Radio, we had to do a half show because. You know, we knew he had penile surgery uh, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, but, uh, you know, the whole last... But, you know, if you listen to Yogi, it was all about the circumcision this past It was. Week. It was the most real show I ever listened to. And it, and you, it was on a, it was an aware, uh, an awareness piece, almost the whole thing. Uh, this explaining the, 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 <laughs> the, the importance of uh, genitalia and hygiene and... You know, making that tough decision, deciding if that decision should make the cut. Haha. There, there that. was once upon a time when I thought knuckleball was like a serious, you know, get around a table and talk about deep issues. But the last two episodes I've heard is, is Sean eating soap and pee boners. I think that was the. <laughs> pee boners. I was so, gonna bring it so, up later in the show. <laughs> so the intro. So the intro is welcome to Knuckleballer Radio, where we talk about penises all the time. Yeah, you know, a, a lot of people, you know, you know, like you said, you know, I, I do zombie cast uh, with Matt, then and, and me and Eli, and Norma. You know, Norma's on both shows, but uh, Knuckleball Radio. A lot of people think it's about baseball. And, and Yogi, I'm sure you did the first time that you come on too. But what, oh. but, but what Knuckleball Radio is is in baseball when you throw a knuckleball, you never know where the ball is going to go. So as for a knuckleball, that we bring knuckleballs to the table, aka a pitch or a topic. And we don't tell each other what the topic is, is going to be. So, like, if Matt comes on the show, we're going to ask him, what is your knuckleball? We, we never know where Matt's going to go. It could be about sex. It could be about the new shoesy ball. It could be about a game. Anything, <laughs> any topic under the sun. Yeah. So that's where knuckleball or radio comes into effect. And we try to take three rounds of knuckleballs from each person. But, yeah, I never know what you're going to talk about, Yogi, when you come on. And you don't know what I'm going to talk about. And, yep. and, you know, it makes for a perfect show. I don't well, ever. I, I don't ever want to even try to even go no, on there. You should, you should <laughs> I'm, sca- I'm you scared to go on, to go on there now. It's fun times, honestly. They're good people, and, and Mariana really wants to come on there, Sean. But uh, she's been super sick. But she really wants to join you guys too. Yeah, dude. It's uh, you know, it's it's it, it's such an open forum type show, man. You know, I mean, you know, I, I really. You could do it one per, you know. You could do it by yourself or two people. So you know, you know, whenever she has the free time, dude. I know you guys are busy up there, above uh, the U.S. border. You know, out there where all the bombs and stuff are, slightly in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Sean's ever been to Canada. No, it's, it's House of Cards season two is on. So give us another week, and then we'll be free to do more stuff, Sean. And she really wants to go on your show. I, I don't. I don't want to eat soap and shit like that. So. All right, so uh, <laughs> Obi, Obi, are you a fan of that, dude? Everybody's Oops, telling me about House of Cards. I'm a huge fan of House of Cards. Nope. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and the crowd goes. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. Nope. Hey, I just wanted to say. I, I wanted to say real quick since we got we were uh, we had the best start ever. 
<laughs> with the full room. And we were trying to do the pregame and then transition to the real live show. And uh, and Sean, we had a Kodak moment, but I, I couldn't say anything back because the music was playing. And I was like, damn it, Sean, I feel awkward now. And Sean said the nicest thing. He's like, I love you guys. And I was like, damn it, now I feel like a dick. <laughs> yeah, I love all. You should feel like a dick. I see Modus in chat, man. I love you too, man. I love everybody. <laughs> well, now you're devaluing what you said. Okay, thanks. I mm. thought I was special. We love Sean you. Sean loves everyone. So by extension, he loves <laughs> nobody. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's very philosophical right there. It's like almost. You love everyone. You love nobody. That's like the whole uh, argument if everybody's special or no mm. one is. It's like almost like the meaning of life. Sorry. Sean's got a big heart. It's too big for all of us to come. Oh, I've I've I've, I've met Sean in person. He's a fantastic dude. You're gonna make me cry. One day, Sean's not too far from me. Cause he's Sweet. in South Carolina and I'm in Georgia. But uh, it's interesting how we all met, cause uh, especially you guys all you know have shows on All Games Network, and I'm and I've been a, a lurker around mm -hmm. there for a long time. I think the first show I was on All Games was uh, Sean's show. Oh no, 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 no. It was actually I, Fr Fred Rojas, the Gaming History 101. And then Fred introduced me to Sean, and Sean introduced me to other people, and then I've been on like every show on all games now. So it's a very tightly knit community. It's cool. Yeah, Lots it of is. Love it's there. a small community too, right? Because you get to know people, you go on different shows. Um, I much love to the all games community for sure. Word. And you just wrote a couple articles for Zombcast too. Yes, we'll get on into website. plugs. Yeah, we'll get into some plugs in a little bit. Let Obi uh, finish up the, the, the intros. <laughs> yeah, it's not even... Do you guys... Masters. Dude, we're not even... We're our, we're done. We're way done past. I mean, we're almost to the feature already. I mean, it's just... Yeah. Sorry. I need these notes because I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm just going to... You know, you point at me when it's my turn. I'm going to do a crosser. I'm doing a crosser right now. Oh, my God. Okay, thank you for watching this show, everybody. <laughs> Um, and I do have his name up there, so you guys, and I did, I sped it wrong. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, make sure you guys to blow his Twitter up right now and uh, yep. just dog the shit out of him right now. Just, why are you capital doing a M. crossword? Capital M. I'm not Matt, I'm McFly. It's for peasants. I'm capital M-A-T-T-O, capital M. Oh, I am so sorry, sir. My agent told you this before. Oh. Your agent didn't tell me anything. <laughs> It's it's kind of awkward because I'm watching. I'm going back between Twitch. Tell your mom to stop calling me. What? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm watching your reactions on Twitch. So I'm reacting to those reactions and not the real live ones. So I'm like, and you should be reacting to freaking <laughs> Skype. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've been doing that all this time. I'm like, what is going on right now? <laughs> <laughs> so Matt's gonna be super delayed on everything. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Oh no. Anyway, welcome geeks, gamers. To horseplay we do want to welcome everybody that is listening as well on the podcast today is february 20th 2014 and this is episode 10 titled brains and smoked paprika if you haven't guessed yet or you're followed our updates throughout the past week on our social media uh it's uh talking kind of talking about zombies and if you can't tell with all the the stuff around us like like right next to me, you got a, 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 a I don't even want to say it a messed up chick with a, a string bikini on with a bear's head zombie heck, heck yeah she's hot though it's okay what <laughs> that's, that's the uh, they were giving that away as like a toy with zombie U editions weren't they in the UK that's where that's from is it it's an actual like it's a bust you can get with the zombie U video game but it I got thought it was uh... for some reason. I thought it was part of Dead Island Riptide. Screw the uh, U.S. We don't want you guys to have it. We can't put a U.S. flag on our tits or anything. <laughs> sure. I'm Canadian, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I'll talk slower then. <laughs> dude, the, dude, the Arma clan that I play with is... not going to talk the Olympics, right? Not yeah, because... Go, Saturday, go! <laughs> Kick your ass in gold tonight, boys. Oh, man, we just lost Matt. I don't know what happened, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you kick Matt off the show? I didn't. He left by himself. <laughs> by his own. He said, ski gas, I'm going home. <laughs> but again, we do have, again, uh, uh, Freeman Daddy 5, and I'm going to try to say it again. I'm going to say it wrong. 
Matto. Matto McFly. Like Marty McFly. Like, okay. like, McFly! I'm not actually doing a crossword, guys. <laughs> he is doing a crossword. He's just like, because you can see him looking down every couple seconds, and he go, you know. Can I, can I show you something? Give me a no. <laughs> yeah. I got this, I got this book because I thought I was smart. I was a puzzle daily planner. And let me show you how much puzzle I've done in the last month. None. I can't get a single goddamn clue on this stupid book. <laughs> Dude, those crossword <laughs> those crossword puzzle books make you make you feel done, no matter how good you are at vocabulary. Like, it's it's horrible. It's crazy. They're okay, like New York so Times puzzles. Yeah. Thirteen. I don't. I can't do it. City that's home to King Thad's Road. Wow. I lost you. Yep. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Uh, okay, thirteen down. City that's home to King Fades at F A H D Road. Are you googling that? Country of origin, please. Um, <laughs> I, I have no. F I don't, <laughs> dude. Just. What? <laughs> can I get a lifeline, please? <laughs> putting it away. Oh, oh, can, I, can I have the definition in Latin, please? Uh, ile. <laughs> He's gonna do it too. Dominus Deus King. Almost. <laughs> no, no, far that was convincing almost. enough. It almost kind of sounded like Pig Latin though for a second, so I don't. Know. Yeah, that's probably. So my wife, she sit there and start going oop and dap a doop a dap a day or whatever she says, <laughs> and and it, it like what are you saying? Wouldn't you like to know? Not really. It's just annoying i don't want to hear it um and then i you know i left her so now i got a new one which is really cool but anyway let's get back to this <laughs> that turned out pretty fast but i do i do want to welcome uh you guys both to horseplay and uh i had said before that these guys are um the hosts of uh two of the hosts of a zombie cast and of other radio shows that they do and it's zombie cast empire not network, not show, not radio. It's fucking <laughs> empire <laughs> everywhere. You guys gotta make sure you guys look them. You guys make sure you guys hit them up. So, Yogi, um, before we get into all the zombie stuff, let's. Uh, what'd you What'd you do a little bit this week? You do anything interesting besides uh, go nuts with all the backup work that you had to come up with? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> still, <laughs> still recovering from the stupid blackout. Four days without power and. Work pa backing up, and uh, uh, I'm still I'm still worn out. <laughs> it was crazy, but the, it was nice though. We got to cook outdoors and stuff, get in touch with nature while our limbs were freezing off. Very Actually, nice. Surprisingly cold considering it's the south, and I'm used to the cold. But uh, yeah, it's pretty nuts. We were not equipped for that for that winter storm, Enos. I mean, Pax. <laughs> so how long was <laughs> how long was the uh, power out for then? For me, four days, but there were some people out like five days, six days. It was crazy because trees were falling down everywhere, bringing down power lines, and the transformers sorted out with the condensation building up. It was crazy. It was you like, like mm -hmm. talk to your family and stuff. <laughs> we yeah, no. We were forced to spend quality time <laughs> together. It was terrible. Matt, Don't you let know, your man, wife hear you say that. Yeah, Yogi, you know, Matt is a bumble himself. You know, they've had about 18 feet of snow up there. Uh, up it's been in uh, Canada. Yeah, it's well, been Hey, I'm I live in Michigan and I've got just about as much. Yeah, you're pretty close. <laughs> hey, we got um piles over my head down in the driveway. It's ridiculous. It's been that way for three months now. So whenever Sean posts pictures of like a light dusting and it's like Snow Mageddon over here in Georgia, I have to send him a picture of my driveway and remind him what it's really like to be Where it's like six feet four. high. Yeah. No less. Hey, hey guys, and that know, we, we, and that's on a warm day, okay? <laughs> yeah. We went to the mall tonight, guys, and I and I actually rocked my Tevas shorts and a t shirt. Uh, because it's uh today it was about seventy and it's supposed to be like seventy three tomorrow. But back freezing next week. That's weird. Yeah, it's yeah, like freaking I think it's above I think it's like thirty three up here right now. Yeah, it's yeah. actually humid today. I'm actually sweating today, so it's like crazy. Did you say where at? <laughs> the thing is, sucked though. People are making fun of, uh, in Georgia. No, me. I'm in Michigan. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I know you're. I know you're in Michigan. Well, that's what but he was people, asking, people but you kept make, make fun of me. I'm in Georgia, complaining about six inches of snow, but we're not equipped for it. So six inches of snow is like everyone else is 18, 20 inches. I guess so. If you don't have like snow plows on the road the next 10 minutes, because we're we're a ride like a machine when it snows up here. Oh yeah, there's like they come out. And you see a whole bunch of cars going one way. You know those are the snow plow drivers. The snow plow drivers. Yeah. Right. Because they all go at once, and they're all like, hurry, go, go, go. And then within, like, 15 minutes after it snows, they're out on the road freaking plowing and salting. Two trucks tandem. Yeah. Running right, side yeah, by yeah, side. These guys dude. save our lives. Hell yeah. yeah. Tires too. All right. So, Obi and, and Mr. Yogi, did you guys get in trouble for horse playing on Titanfall any this week? Uh, did y'all do any of that? <laughs> oh, God. I knew it was going to come up. Can we not comment on that, or do we do we have to? <laughs> no, I, no, I, I didn't. Our collective stance on the next generation, and uh, you know, Obi could chime in, but we've pretty much established on the show that we love the Xbox One, and that'll be our next step. But we're sticking with the PC for now because we're kind of unmoved. By, <laughs> we're kind of unmoved. I don't know. I think it's a combination of being old and jaded. You know, it's like kind of more like uh, next gen, man. PC master racers. No, not even. Like I, I'm just like I'm at a point where it's like nothing impresses me anymore. I'm like, ah, that's, I've seen that last uh, five years. I saw that ten years ago. Ah, whatever. Oh, well, are you talking happened. graphics or game content though? Just game, the uh, gameplay style and yeah. the concepts is just nothing that really makes me go. Oh, that's that, that's. I need to buy the system now. All right, all right, all right. It's, it's talking about systems tonight. We, we, yeah, we just left the mall, yeah. and and we, we went into GameStop, and we played for thirty minutes. Oh, here we Me go. and the boys, we played Donkey Kong <laughs> on on the Wii U, which comes out tomorrow. Crap, so here, we, right here we go. Right? <laughs> and I, I, I'm going to say this on Horse It's fun. <laughs> it's fun, but it's as video game as it gets. And I would say that, you know, the, the Vita easily overpowers what what Donkey Kong looks like. And I think that's a 10 out of 10 game. Right, Matto? Yeah, they're raving about that. But it's still just a crayon colored <laughs> video game. I mean, it is I mean, it's nothing more. You know what I'm saying? It's really good. It's really and I'm not cutting it down, but it's for next gen. I, I played the 10 out of 10 game tonight and it's uh it, it's just it's just a Donkey Kong game. But that's <laughs> that's a thing, right? You're never going to hear well, we don't have to get into this night. But you're never going to hear Wii U people bash any new <laughs> Nintendo games that are coming out cuz they're so protective now of the system. Yeah. And I, I chroma I chroma keyed. You'll see it when you watch the playback. I chroma keyed and then moved myself over and then petted the boobs. <laughs> Sorry. Awesome. Hey, I just I tried. Saw that. I had see, to, man. The reason I keep laughing, Obi, is because you know I keep looking at the wrong screen. Yeah, I see where Yogi is live, but I keep looking yeah. at the delayed version. So Yogi be over here talking about something, and I saw him moving the Yogi <laughs> name around, and it, he was laughing. But, but he was just looking. It's, uh, it's like watching a Japanimation. Uh, <laughs> Japanimation, like, yeah. Yogi. I keep looking at Yogi down there, but it's not the live Yogi. Right. Yeah, that's why I keep the, the Skype window up, the little preview window up. I keep it up in the middle of my screen right by the webcam. So when I'm talking, I'm looking at you guys or trying to. Yeah, I it, it helps a little bit. It's just messing me up. Yeah. I, I, it's all new to me, so I, I, I'm getting there. <laughs> Your avatar is flashing. No video. Shame. See, <laughs> see, Obi was talking, but it sounded like your voice. <laughs> I need to Man, give us some We're not gonna get anywhere. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Hey, wait, no, we're not even Matt, past Matt, the intro Matt, Matt, yet. Matt, Matt, okay. Time limit, by the way, Obi. That's okay. Since I'm artificially inflating it, anyways, it would be unfair to me for to leave in my own time limit if I'm. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I personally don't what? care. <laughs> Kirby doesn't like to make toys. <laughs> he said the f bomb. I didn't. I, I cut myself like. No, I heard it. You said fuck. I did wrong. You were drinking your drink. You heard. No. No, I don't. We don't care. We just don't wait. We just do. We don't want the the old F this, F that, F that, blah, blah, blah. No, anyway. No, no, it's got to mean it. If it. Yeah, if it happens naturally, it. passionate about it, yeah. Of course. Well, no, just for the sake of saying it. 
that's our policy. Cause we're not we're not on any we're not syndicated on any networks where they're anal about that kind of stuff. And mm. I think we're gonna keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Right. I mean, Matt's a he, he's a nasty biker. You gotta watch that cash. <laughs> I mean, it's his horseplay. We just say whatever. We're yeah, like saying, saying, he looks and the... looks and he looks like he has the persona right now on camera of a nasty biker. Yeah, yeah I'm 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 pretty... I'm leaning more towards preppy rich kid, but that's just me. Anyway, rich kid, I would love to be a preppy rich kid. Me too. <laughs> um. <laughs> Man, Matt's packing a knuckle like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, guys. Are we getting into that now? Okay. Boing. <laughs> no. By the way, if you were looking at the screen right now, who do you think would be the biker in this game? <laughs> the third place for bikers. Here, let me point. Yellow. It's it's Yogi. <laughs> let's go. Let's go like this. I'm pointing down to my. Wait, so you're you're pointing according to Skype, but you're not pointing pointing in the right direction. Uh, according I'm pointing to which I think I am. No, you're pointing towards Sean, uh, Sean and Skype, and then you're pointing towards the boobs and stream. <laughs> I'm Skype, he's pointing towards Go the other way. Sean's junk. Go the other way. Uh. No, with your other arm. Yeah, uh, this uh, way. Arm. Yeah, <laughs> we're going <laughs> Yogi. Knowledge all around it. Oh my and God. then, and then right now, Freeman Daddy's actually pointing down everybody. Just so you guys, you guys can't, you know, you guys can't see it because you're listening, but he's pointing down. <laughs> what the heck? Someone's got some. Uh, so, yeah, what's that man. Obi? We're rocking out. I got. Yeah, I know. We're rocking out some um, some Avenged Sevenfold. But uh, anyway, uh, not even gonna talk to this guy. Uh, he knows I'm doing a talk show. I I, I actually answered it and then hung up on him. Um, sorry, dude. But anyway, by the way, we are um, we are really uh, something a little bit serious on the serious side. Uh, we're actually in double digits now. Episode this is episode ten, and we're very very pleased, like I said before, to have Matt and Freeman with us to talk some zombies. Um, we do guys want to let you guys know you guys can tweet us throughout the show. Um, our twitters, twitters, <laughs> our. <laughs> On our cameras, so you guys can hit us up anytime throughout the show, and as well on uh, if you guys are watching us live, feel free to chat. I'm trying to watch everything at once, so if I don't get you in chat, the other three are 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 talking right now in chat. I promise. So for the people listening in and can't see the video after the fact, but the twitters, I'll get the twitters. I'll get the twitters. Freeman we, Daddy Five again, Metal McFly. <laughs> <laughs> At Yogizilla and at Obi One X Two, and you can tweet us anytime. Yeah, every day. Every and, day. And, and, uh, and Matt's throwing gang signs. I'm getting a little scared. When she was born in a black suit, the dark stuff the behind. Say you're gonna be special. You sweet little toot toot. Who is that, Matt? That wasn't me. That was oh, you. No, I'm the only one that on video. I'm busted. <laughs> you, were, <laughs> you were dancing and no one saw you. What a wasted my, my, opportunity. My toot toot. Is that you, Sean? Don't mess with my toot toot. Yes, Sean. I will never mess with your toot toot. Sean might take my, my crown. Okay, <laughs> before we get too much on toot toot here. I want to give everybody uh, some good news. We do have um, Obizilla. Obizilla. I did that again. Yogizilla. That's <laughs> going to be our new name, guys. On our, it's going to be Obizilla Network, okay? Um, uh, we are pleased to announce that uh, here in very short, a very short fashion, Geeky Antics Network Global, or uh, Gang, G-A-N-G, um is in full effect uh, so um, if you guys have any uh any any podcasts that you guys want to talk about any anything and everything that that uh, you guys want to see and hear let us know right there 
Um, and as well, of course, as our Steam community page, hit us up right there. We do a lot of stuff, giveaways included, on our Steam page. But let's get right into it. We're not going to, I don't want to do too much. We're going to do, we got, I think we got a little bit of news. Um, and then um, we're going to, uh, we got some fun facts and a couple, uh, couple quickies. What do you want to do first, Yog? I'm gonna give it to you, just because I'm I'm lost right now. Actually, I lost where I was at. <laughs> I'm we kind of jumped around all over the planet. That's kind of the nature of things. So. Uh, That's every week. Okay. <laughs> I think what we'll do, we'll, we'll rush through the news in a little bit. But first, uh, what we did back in episode eight, we did a little segment called uh, Fun Facts, when we had Normie, also from ZombieCast and Knuckle Baller Radio. She joined us, and we did a little thing called Fun Facts, where everyone would share a couple of, uh, you know, uh, anecdotes or fun facts about themselves that people may not normally know about them. Doesn't have to be too revealing, you know, whatever you feel like sharing. Um, but I think to keep it moderate, I might have to give us some some guidance, some keywords to go with. <laughs> Moose knuckle. <laughs> All right, the first one's on the house, and I'll, I'll moderate it. First, to get, I know Sean wants to chime, chime in, so we'll, Sean, share, share something fun about yourself. A story, a little a quick story, a little fun fact about yourself for people that may not that may know you or may, may not know you. You know what? I, I've got a real personal fun fact, and, and it's, not, it, it's not really a fun fact. It's kind of a sad fact, but it's something that's impacted me today that's, uh, that's kind of been on my mind. And, uh, you, you know, as of uh, the 21st, which is tomorrow, and I, and I don't mean to bring it down, but uh, I lost my mother seven, seven years ago on the 21st. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, the night before I lost my mother, which, which you know, it, it, you know uh, I'm not over it, but, uh, but, you know, it's just good memories. You know, I, I kissed this guy. And uh, one of the memories of my mother's passing was the midnight before we lost her which was the release of crackdown and i, I remember you know it was uh I, I was so excited about crackdown and really it got me through a lot of hard times a couple of months afterwards but uh you know crackdown you know has always been my favorite game it's been known on knuckleball radio zombie cast i always talk about uh playing crackdown but you know that's that's kind of it's a little more sentimental to me than, than what I've ever expressed and uh, you know uh, you know almost seven years ago you know here in about 20 minutes I was at Walmart waiting to pick up crackdown for the the halo 2 beta code that come with that and then uh, you know what what pretend happened you know the day after but I uh, but you know I've had crackdown on my mind a lot you know Yogi were you ever a fan of this game you know, I joined, I got into it way after the fact. Like, I played the demo when it first came out, but I wasn't part of the, like the mad rush about it. Uh, for some reason, I don't know, I, I missed the bus, and I, I don't know what I was playing at the time. But it is a really cool game. It kind of reminded me in some ways of uh, City of Heroes, right? Uh, kind of like the grandeur of it, and you're know, like a superhero type thing, and the extrem, the extremeness of it. You know? Yeah, yeah. But but you know, just just uh, you know. Y- something you said personal to me and like i said i don't want to bring it down but uh you know seven years ago for a couple months orb hunting uh was really medicine to to freeman daddy you know i mean it helped me through a lot of hard times and uh, you know that that that's one of the reasons why i'm so passionate about it but you know that that's just kind of where i'm at right now you know i was sitting here looking at the clock i was like you know seven years ago you know i was i was at walmart right now you know just just kind of retraced into the steps seven years later but uh you know, when it comes to video games and horrors playing, you know, Crackdown is uh, will always be my my favorite game for fun. You know, not just the sentimental factor. You know, it was an awesome game. Matt, did you ever play that game, Crackdown uh, One? Yeah, I did. Not for the Halo Two beta at the time, but uh, no, I certainly and I loved it. It was one of my first uh, introductions to the Xbox 360. It's kind yeah. of a late adapter there. And you know, I I really I played the demo, but I bought it for the Halo Two beta. <clears throat> I, I knew I think that everyone did, yeah. I knew that what it was about because of the demo, but uh, you know, it didn't need the Halo 2 beta, man. It was uh, for me, it was like the perfect game. You could go climb the buildings for a little bit, 
And I really wish next gen, uh, you know, Halo, I mean, uh, uh, part two was just not as good, but uh, I, I, I really hope Crackdown uh, next gen uh, comes around soon. I really wish it would, dude. You know, we made the way the first one was. You know, I know you love Crackdown. I never knew the connection until tonight, so. Yeah, yeah dude. For it, sharing, buddy. Yeah, man. So it's, uh, you know, and like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's a great game on its own, but, uh, but you know, it was, you know, I went to the midnight launch. Yeah, I stayed up to, to 3 o'clock, you know, and then the next day, you know, it was, you know, what happened yeah. happened. But, but, but anyway, not to bring it down, you, my, my mother had had a heart attack uh, a month ago, so so I had 30 days to, to to make things right, you know, which things were right, but uh, it couldn't happen any more perfect, dude. But uh, Crackdown's been on my mind, Yogi. That's uh, that's kind of my personal story for today. Man, it's hard to follow that up now. Yeah, no, I'm, not, I'm not going. I give up my turn, guys. That's, that's Good. Tell a story about, like, Good segment. On to the news. No, yeah, just playing. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you know, I was sitting here looking at the mic, and I was looking at the thing, and I was like, Ugh. No, buddy, thanks for sharing. I, you got to talk about that stuff. If it's the night, that's obviously going to weigh in on you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, seven years ago, man, uh, Crackdown uh, came out, dude, which, uh, dude, we need a new one next gen, man. Can't wait. I think, I think Son and I are kindred spirits, because I'm a sentimental bastard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so... I have like weird memories attached to the things that I shouldn't, so I know how that is. Like there's little places where I go is my my uh, little happy place. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think everyone's got games like that. Um, Sean, you're talking about how you know collecting orbs is therapy. I think all of us have that time when like something really bad was going on in our lives, and we just like played a game to zone out. And that's part of the reason I love games, because when it does get a little rough. You know, I just check in to my PS4, PS3, zone out for a couple hours, and I can kind of just readjust. So I, I, I completely understand what you're saying here. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's perfect medicine. It's like the perfect drug when you need it sentimentally. Yeah. <laughs> so, titties and boobs, titties and boobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rub, rub. <laughs> you can't see me. I'm rubbing. I'm rubbing. <laughs> You're right. oh, man. Okay, Actually, that got off topic really so fast. I grabbed you, Toby. I'm sorry. Uh, Thanks. Uh, go a little further to the right. I, yeah. I will, a lot of I people grab me and and, and and trying to grab her. It's okay. Oh, everybody's trying to grab. Oh, you guys trying to touch the. Hey, uh, get off my head. Point. <laughs> you guys have to see the video, by the way. For people listening on the podcast and getting an audio only, you have to watch the video on YouTube. <laughs> they're, 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 just to know what the madness is going on right now. There's some boob tweaking. Did he, just, <laughs> did he just say, get off his head? What? <laughs> <laughs> but to build upon what Sean just said. But, but, but if you're looking at the video, you got to admit, dude, my crotch looks like Yogi. And Bass crotch looks like Obi. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Look, your crotch just smiling, Matt. As Modius in the chat, getting his back on the race. <laughs> so one, of my, one of my oldest uh, clan mates. Uh, we have a gaming clan where we just uh, we're more of a social club, and we play lots of different games together across all consoles. There's just right. a lot of, of we're we're a gaming clan ba based. Uh, same kind of uh, principles you have, Sean, like building family. That's more important to us than any single game, and. Uh, as Modius has said, uh, one of the oldest games we used to play, that when a lot of us were, this is back in the late 90s, early 2000s, when we were, a lot of us were, we were in a dark place. We would go to this game to seek, uh, you know, companionship and friendship and shoulder to lean on. And it was one of the most simple, cheesiest games ever. It was a game called Ark. You probably never heard of it. It's yeah. attack, retrieve, uh, capture. And the uh, interesting thing about this game and I went through a dark place myself during this time. Uh, I had an uncle that committed suicide, and you know that was a place I went to to kind of just escape that for a little while and just not get be stuck in, in my own head because I'm the, I'm that kind of person. If you give me too much quiet time, bad things happen. I have to keep myself right busy. There with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know um, this you know the arc. He made bring up he brought up a good point. And the fun thing about arc is there was a lot of there's a lot of history in that game because it's been remade by a, a new uh, new group. Uh, under a spiritual successor, but that also the company that the people that originally made Ark are now the people that behind PopCap, and they're old friends of ours. 
So it's like a lot of history there and a lot of nostalgia there. And even though the game, the spiritual success is nothing like it used to be, it's like one of those games that every now and then I'll still go into just to have that community, that tightly knit community, and bring back those good memories of people that, you know, people miles away, and that you got a support group there. So I, I'm totally there with you, Sean. I, that was my game that I could definitely think of right off the top of my head. Uh, that, that definitely is that for me, that sentimental escape of sorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pure medicine, man. For real. Matt, have you ever had any, like, uh, maybe just a game like that that, that just kind of settled in uh, sentimental reasons? Uh, yeah, there's always times, right? I mean, there's, um, thankfully, both my parents are still with us. Um, you know, but there's been deaths in the family where you just kind of spend that night just kind of saying, I'm going to deal with this tomorrow, but for tonight, I'm just going to go with my safe zone, which, you know, during a couple of times was back in the PS2 era, so it was like either Tomb Raider or... Leaves your suit, Larry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'd be a little creepy. <laughs> now, see, Obi can relate to that one. <laughs> yeah, Obi, come on, you got to relate to that one. Uh, Great. Backwards. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's straight for us. Is it? Yeah, your local video is always backwards. Okay. It's mirrored for you. <laughs> so for those that can't see the video, Matt's holding up a, a cue card of sorts that, said, that says fart. And it's pointing down. Who's that pointing down to? Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's cueing us to there fart. <laughs> Sorry. Even though the cue was on, you know, camera. Well, I mean, hey, everybody, everybody that's watching, I'm going to cue <laughs> Obi to fart Inside now. Baseball for the three. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I forgot we're not actually recording the video part. What? Well, we record. We record both. Oh we yeah. Audio and yeah. Video save. Yeah. I'll send you. We gotta. Yeah. Yo, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we... <laughs> I'd rather just be, you know, lay on, lay, you know, lay on my back and be on the bottom. Let them sit where right. they need to be. You know. All right. Cool. <laughs> if I can pick them up and put them where they need to be, if they don't want to go. Is that your fun fact, Obi? You like to let them sit where, where they, wherever they fall. Hence, hence the keyword morning wood. Yeah, I'm on top. Stick your tongue out. Boing. Motor. No. Motor. Yogi, stick your tongue out. I just did. I'm not going to do it any longer. I'm going to change the cameras around right now, man. That's kind of a fun fact. <laughs> Are you licking his elbow? You're licking it? On the bottom, Matt. He's... Uh, we're the bottoms now? Uh, no. It's a power position. All right. <laughs> so, did, I, did anybody have a round? Obi, did you take your round? Yeah. Matt, Morning Matt wood, man. Round? I didn't really take my round, but I, I don't want to, you know, I want to leave Sean with his thing because that's the, that was a powerful moment. Um, I know. So hopefully I'll be back so I can, have an, I can think of a story I can tell because right now it's all silly stories and I feel that doesn't fit in with the yeah. current All right. So I'll, I'll <laughs> bring it back. Oh, man, do it. I'll bring it back without making you feel bad about overshadowing that moment. <clears throat> no, I can't. Uh, okay, good. The mo good. You're not gonna overshadow. It. That's awesome. I'm glad the moment's already passed. So <laughs> we're going on. So McFly. <laughs> what up? What you got? Uh, for what? How about I give a keyword and then you can share? <laughs> Tell you what. This is what we'll do. Your what keyword. About? Your Six keyword words. is apple. Okay. He's like, okay, I, go. Yeah. Apple, yes. Yeah. Apple better, yet, better, yet, better yet, better yet, better yet, better yet, better yet. Let's do it this yeah. way. All right, ask me a question. How about you ask me a question? Any question you want to know of me, ask me a question. <laughs> Any question? Oh, my goodness. That's, that's going to be a load of... Let's do it like this. We'll do two more rounds until we can keep moving along. We got a lot of, a lot of a little bit of news to do, and then we're going to go to our main segment. Where we what are we doing up there? What's this guy doing? I'm dying. <laughs> I got some keywords. You guys ready? This, right. this will be just for Sean and Matt. Oh, Alright, go. Let's just take the segment. What are we doing? I'm gonna give some keywords. You guys can come up with an anecdote or a fun fact about yourself. Oh, okay. Cool. We'll all, right. all the keywords. We'll do two or three rounds. I'm playing. Right. You guys could, between Sean and Matt, everybody pretty much already knows us. We're gonna. How about, how about, I don't care. I'm Sean still gonna Matt, play. Matt, Sean, Sean, Matt, Matt, Sean, and that way we'll take turns going first. Alright, so. But, but you, uh, for this first one, I want one of you to s snatch it if if you, if, you, if it ma if it matches you. All right. All right. All right. And you got a buzzer in. The, right. the, 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 
Do the little thing. Oh, we can't see shot and do the buzzer. Eh, eh. You okay. gotta, that's what you gotta do. Eh, eh. Well, I'll do this. Whoa! <laughs> and I'll do, get to the chopper. <laughs> my buzz. All right, so the keyword is the doctor. Get to the chopper. I got one. Uh, when I was born, the doctor said I wouldn't survive the night because when they were taking me out, they cracked my skull. And apparently it caused way too much damage. My parents were getting ready to say goodbye to me that night. Um, but somehow I healed over. And if you shave my head, you'll see a big dip in my head because of that crack. So that's why I can never shave my head because it is a little uh, wonky now. Damn, you guys are sharing some really heavy stuff tonight. <laughs> I thought he was... ah, shaved his head. We might have to rename this episode the the Matt Bradford and Sean Freeman intimate hour or two <laughs> or two <laughs> no nah, normally it's like yeah i'm gonna talk about <laughs> that's good though that's good that's, that's that's a good fun fact well i feel honored to have you guys share so much on the show tonight i almost feel bad following up with we're not done yet <laughs> we got more we got more we got more right, next uh i'll give you a pick guys uh the, i'll give you a pick of the litter i know which one sean's gonna want to buzz in on so i'll just put it as part of this uh cowlick <laughs> dancing apple Ooh, dancing apple no dance cowlick comma dancing oh. comma apple those three phrases are key Sean, i know you want to go first for this one apple? i know he wants to pick the apple one go ahead sean share your apple story we know we know how you feel about sean about apple. Apple simply works, and the other stuff just sucks. That's it. Well, Apple Apple constricts you to their own formula, while the other stuff gives you freedom to make <laughs> the communication device you wanted in the first place. <laughs> it's true. Apple, you got, if you're gonna say, if you're gonna choose Apple, you gotta choose an intimate story, like a little anecdote. Like one time, I was at the Apple store, and I, I accidentally sharted myself. I don't know, something like that. Um. Wow, dead silence. <laughs> Holy hell! The I cow licked the apple while he was dancing, um, with morning wood. Whoa! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he was balancing it on his morning wood. So you that's <laughs> even better. This is, <laughs> this is Shaw with Apple products. My process. How long <laughs> has this Apple products? Please, please, master, give me my process. Apple 4.0, too. It'll make it so much better. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Now they have colors for iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> not, knock on wood, but I would have to say, you, you know, uh, the podcast that I do, people seem to like, and, and I gotta, I gotta owe a lot of the success of, of the things that I do with podcasting to the software that I use on Apple, the clarity, the the professionalism <laughs> that Apple brings to the table. And, and Android sucks, Matt. <laughs> so that's, I love that's, how you're like uh, such a good argument, and then an Android sucks. <laughs> so, Sean's uh, fun fact is something that every, anyone that knows him remotely <sighs> will know. He's an Apple fan. And Matt, I, I did tell you I did, and we talked about this before about Minesweeper coming to Android. I hear, <laughs> I hear, it's gonna be in color. It's gonna have it's the gonna green blow background. Your mind. It's gonna be black, white, and green background. I hear you can have co-op, local co-op, but with uh, red bombs. Oh man! No, that's that's the up, that's the DLC. You gotta pay for that. Yeah, yeah. Android won't do red. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was will a lie. Too, it'll be called iMindSweeper, and you'll have to get a license, and then ten updates throughout the time you play it. Oh, I got one. Yeah. When we were we were playing Arma two, and I I play it in a, a clan. Okay, and what they have, this is really funny. Um, it's called 21st Hunting Simulator. Okay, half of the half of the people that you can get into the on the server as are drunk Russian hunters, and the other half are woodland animals. The first yeah. time I this listen, the first time I tried this, and I was like, oh, this is gonna be awesome, and they said, be a rabbit. Well, I'm going to go through everything, and I'll tell you why he said be a rabbit in a second. Well, you have cows, okay? So the first time I was a cow, I went up and licked a hunter, and he shot me in the face. Second time I was a goat. Not a good idea. 
Third time, I was a pig. Not a good idea. Fourth time, this is the funny part. Now, rabbits, they go three times the speed as everything else. And then um, on our server, the rabbits actually have little suicide vests to where if you hit escape and respawn, you blow up. So we rush at the rush Russian hunters, and they're all drunk, staggering around, talking ch trash. And we just run up with rabbits and just boom, blew them up. Little rabbit, come up, say hello. Oh no, I died. Go boom. <laughs> That's something Borat. Yes, <laughs> my wife. That's a, is that a mod for Arma? Is that uh, it's it's actually a it's a it's a mod one of our uh, members created. That's, that's actually a genius. It's 21st Hunting Simulator. It's fucking awesome, man. That sounds it's like crazy. I, enjoy. I have to revisit Arma 2 and Gary's Mod at that. There's so many mods for those two games. Gary's Mod. Isn't that a life of its own by now? Yeah, yeah. It's its yeah. own standalone thing, and they got all, like a bunch of like add-ons for it. It's crazy. And well, they, they got made... zo zombie add-ons for it, by the way. Absolutely. And they made Stanley Parable out of, uh, I think, a Half-Life. The same engine, didn't they? Yes. Yes. Which is a great game, by the way. If you like narrative. <laughs> if you like mine. Um, Fucking. The, the humor. Ah! Is, you can say it. Nah, nah, we don't care. Long. Mind but, screw. It's a mind job. It's it's not it really a game. It's a game about games. If that makes brilliant. Sense. Yeah, it's brilliant humor. It's indescribable. It, it's yeah. it's very. It's it's a it's an interactive. That's, you know, I won't get into an argument, but I think it's more of an interactive story than a video game. Yeah, there's no lose conditions. Yeah, there's no lose condition. I mean, there's just different. Well, that know, blows. I don't ever want to play that game. It all, it's, like, it's, it's, it's an experience. Yeah, yeah. There's a, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. It's very it immersive. Close. It is, it is really cool. I'd love, they have that Oculus Rift thing coming out now. Uh, well, in the next couple of years, I'd love to play it with that because that's going to revolutionize first person gaming, especially zombie games. We need a cool segue, but it's, um, like, just, I've seen people play horror games with the Oculus Rift, and mm -hmm. it blows my mind. I can't wait to get into that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that and the the Hydras, that, for the motion control, have you seen those, or the stems? No. The Hydra? It's, uh, I think it's called Hydra, the R Razor Hydra, where it's two, like, Wii remotes, kind of, and you control yourself completely. It's supposed to go hand-in-hand -hand with the Oculus Rift. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. So it's one, it's basically the, like a it's like a it's like a a, a Wii um, the screen, but it's actually got it's actually got a controller on it to where you can actually turn and actually turn the screen and actually do different uh, things and it's got buttons and thumb triggers and then joystick triggers and then it's got other buttons on the side and it's yeah it's well, like it's, it's like five hundred it's like six hundred bucks so I mean it's not anything I'm gonna get anytime soon. Well, that's the cool thing about it is that they have the stem, which is I think just came out of Kickstarter, and they have the Hydra. Mm -hmm. These are just peripherals for the controlling of your character, yeah, and yeah. then uh, and the and then if you use that in conjunction with the Oculus Rift, it's more the Oculus Rift is more for just controlling your field of vision. Yeah. So, so ah, I'm excited. This yeah, it's be crazy. <laughs> interesting next ten years, I think. Well, Matt's got a Great. boner under his desk now. I do. Expensive. I just like. <laughs> All of, a, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you hear a thunk. What was that? Matt's like, sorry. It's pressure. I don't like being watched. Yeah, I've been told in the chat that my eyes look like TVs. And that's what happened. I have mega glare. I need to fix the lighting situation. Who, who said Bro. that? This guy named Freeman Daddy. Hey, a, those are my eyes. Those must be Apple glasses because they're screwed up already. Yeah, these are, this, these are my Google glasses. I, I'm actually getting a teleprompter here. I'm jacked to the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> and Obi's it doing a Stevie Wonder thing. <laughs> I just called. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Can we do any more fun facts? Oh, man, I, I love you. Oh. I think. Sorry. I, think we side, I got caught in the moment. I look like a 16-year-old in my picture, but I'm just really Yeah, you actually look like a 12-year-old, but that was the same thing. Thirty years old. Well, I'm of age. <laughs> hey guys, let's just agree that we're gonna have to get the gang back. The, this, to disagree. This gang back on the show again. I gotta make myself look. Better. What are we done already? Or something? No. Well, I think we're gonna move on to the to the news. <laughs> what are you doing? Not, not, <laughs> he's, yeah. he's fluffing his hair, making him look older. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> Look, it's like instant conversion. Oh, you sexy bitch. <laughs> oh, now he looks at Unibomber. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, so no. I'm Matt, like, I know you guys both, uh, I know it's late for you guys. We're, we're the midnight crew, so we go very late, and I know you guys yeah. have a bit of time. Hey, can I tell one joke before we move on? Yeah. No. Yes. Anyway. I just, yeah. about this. I just want to say real quick, though. You guys do have to come back. So, yeah. on an episode when we don't have a theme, because obviously we all go on tangents like crazy. <laughs> I will, I will, that will be, that that episode will be a special episode, and that episode will be, will be done. And this is going to be a, uh, we're going to throw a knuckleball in it, and I'm not telling anybody how the show is going to go. You guys just show up. I like that. I like that idea. That's going to be the special show, Yogi. We'll talk about that. Special if you, tangent we'll, show. Yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll talk about that in a minute. All right, chef. Okay, joke time. Great joke, man. Awesome joke. There, there, there's, this called, there's this thing called honor, Honorable Mountain. And on top of Honorable Mountain, you've got, you've, got a, you've got an American, a guy from the United States. You've got a Canadian. Blame Canada. And, uh, there's a, and there's a Polak. Polak. Blame the Polak. Let's go straight to the slangs for the Polak. <laughs> oh man, this is be good. So, so all the guys, you know, before they jump off the mountain, they want to dedicate something that's passionate to their life. So the American gets up there and he's like, you know, I'm gonna do this for my country, and he pushes off the Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> I'm sorry, Matt. <laughs> but, no, there was another part to that joke, actually. Wasn't it after, right after he pushed the Canadian? Yeah, after he pushed the Canadian off, he told him as the guy, as the Canadian's falling down, he said, the guy's like, ah! and then he's like, by the way, you don't have real people in your country. Yeah, dude, I, I made that up, man. I, I was thinking about that. <laughs> we, 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 we see that you've made it up. because it... It's really obvious you made it up. But it has All right. Been... Here's the judge scale. Here's the judge scale. Oh, wait, you get the judge scale. Oh, yeah, man, uh, oh. We the whole United States Canada wars all the time. That's true. And you know what? Our boys are going up against each other in hockey soon. <laughs> oh god. Oh, 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 oh. The scale. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, heavy. It's, it's, heavy. it's 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 not gonna go. John, it's John, it's about right John. there. It's about right there. It's not a full thumbs up though. It's it's about a it's about a quarter thumbs. It's about a quarter thumbs. American justice. What's what's funny? Hey, is, hey we'll say, hey, Canuck, pushed him off, Obi. You did. Uh, you jerked him off. What? What? I, what? That's all I heard was I jerked him off, Obi. I jerked him off. What? <laughs> Wow, we are zombies, eh? Zombies. It's well, yeah, we're so about to jump into the zombies, guys. We promise. We're gonna do some quick news, and then we're gonna jump into the the segments. We're gonna talk about some Walking Dead, and then we're gonna talk everything zombies thereof. I know we have uh, some some Walking Dead reactions that we want to share for the season four comeback, uh... and uh, we'll try to keep it as spoiler free as possible because Obi's really, really behind. Sorry, Obi. You'll, you'll probably, you know what? You'll probably forget by the time we get to to those episodes. No, in my memory, definitely. I'll forget by tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, so I won't feel so bad about spoiling it for you. Are there many spoilers in the last couple episodes? Or how far off are you, Obi? <laughs> one. No, he's in season two. I mean, to That's be fair. Trailer for season one. <laughs> to be fair, I recently caught up on two. like two Season years. one, episode ten. Oh. We don't have to talk Walking Dead. We, I mean, it's gonna come up. But. Well, no, we're gonna talk Walking Dead. What this is what the show is about. You won't so, even know who we're talking about. Yeah, I won't care. The only, the There's only thing. Things, what, Susan dies. Dead. He don't know who Susan. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know that Herschel uh, turns into a zombie. <laughs> well, so you want me to, you want to do the news, Obi, or shall I? No, I don't. I'm mad at Matt right now. What did I do? Oh, uh, I'm, 
I'm just throwing Everybody stuff out. Everybody's just mad at Matt. I don't know why. I, I, I just, just hey, nice. would you want me to be mad at you, yeah, Yogi? Like then oh. I'm just going to be mad at somebody, and Matt is the Yogi, first person I looked at. Smile. Yogi's I'm like, like, I don't care. Whatever, man. Let's go over some news. Into the news. <laughs> I love you, Yogi. What? Love you guys, too. I still feel bad about missing the Kodak moment in the beginning. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah, some obligatory news. I'll try to run through it real quick so we can jump into the zombie stuff. I know we're already at, like an hour in or so. But, uh, so speaking so. of the Olympics, you guys actually set up a good segue there. I should have taken advantage of it. But, uh, you know, apparently a big deal right now is that there's stray dogs in Sochi. And uh, they become kind of the unofficial Winter Olympic mascots. So, now. I heard that they hired people to kill the stray dogs in the Sochi. Yes! And then they stopped them. That's the part that pissed me off. And they, they, did, they did stop that. But mm -hmm. the spokespeople initially of the Olympics, uh, they were like saying, oh, uh, no healthy dog will be, you know, uh, euthanized. Jeez. You know, like, what's the criteria for that? I mean, if, if they got yeah. mange, they're going to kill them. You know, and mange could be cured. I mean, I'm sure they're doing a bunch of tests before they put that. Uh, yeah, a big bet. A wide battery of tests. Yeah, I don't think so. It's like oh, you look sickly <laughs> done. So yes. you know uh, that upset me because I, I don't know about you guys, but I, you know I'm a dog lover. I, I love animals, period, and that upset me. But apparently, a lot of the people that are participating in the Olympics, the a lot of the Olympians are actually taking in the stray dogs. So that's a, that's a happy end to that story. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I can relate to that. Like, it is, even my neighborhood is a lot of stray dogs, and it pisses me off because people they get pets. And then they think it's, they're like kind of like toys, and then they get bored of them, and they realize, oh, there's a lot of work involved. And I'm just gonna let them go. <laughs> yeah. And it, oh god, I, I want to strangle those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I have some friends like that who really want a cute pet, but once that pet actually becomes work, um, they either they consider giving them back or giving them to friends, and it, it makes me mad as well. So I'm right Dude, I, I love my dogs, man. You know, every day when I get home from work, I, I honestly feel like. They're believers, and I'm Justin Bieber. Believers? Man. Oh my yes. god. Yes. <laughs> and I'm Justin Bieber. I mean, yeah, the dogs are always happy to see me, man. I mean, it's uh, it's like, it's like New Year's, you know, the strike of New, New Year's Day on New Year's Eve. Uh, every time you come home, man. I, I mean, I absolutely love my dogs, man. And, and I would hurt someone ever. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> uh. So. Now, where, where did you hear the news story that they're being treated nicely now? Did that come out of like the Russian news press corps? Or something like no. that. Like, uh, how dogs are being treated good. Dogs. No, it, no was, it was a third um, party. Story it was a third party. Well, it was the same third. <laughs> it was the same third party that I actually was talking. My wife was doing a lot of, you know, figuring out, you know, um, you know what kind of living arrangements and all that stuff had over there. And there's no running water for most of the athletes when they first got there. All the hotels, they were like all the motels. Most of them were like three weeks to a month behind. And building them, so yeah, like half the athletes didn't have even have a room to go into. Uh, um, no running yeah, water. Yeah, they, if a you lot didn't, of the water there was there was there. They said you couldn't you couldn't have contact with the skin on your face. <laughs> you couldn't even. So I mean, you, you couldn't even put it on your skin. You couldn't even wash yeah. your face with this water. Okay, that's how yeah. bad it is. So, so if so you didn't have a the zombie apocalypse starts. Exactly, dude. <laughs> now uh, I know. It, but it's like a high tourist destination. That's that's one thing I didn't understand. Yeah, it it uh, doesn't make any sense. Like a resort area, but, but well, all, all it's, the resorts, were, yeah, a lot of them they say are still halfway done. Well, part of it was the the main resort or the main two resorts that are actually in basically, well, right in Moscow, um, are they're all done and those were filled up like immediately because of all the people that have already been there or just whatever. But you got to think about it. They've had two years, no less than two years, to get this stuff done. And no yeah, years. but I'm like a long time ago. yeah, but it's yeah, like it's years. they give them the final. Okay, it's gonna be here. Yeah. You know, you know, it, the, you know. They say possibilities and all that stuff, and then they give them the final. It is gonna be in Sochi or whatever it's called. Well, they had the in two thousand fourteen. Like when the Olympics end, uh, this this coming weekend, uh, they'll hand the flag off to the next city, right? I don't know. 
I don't really, dude. I don't pay attention to the the, the Olympics. It's pointless well, for me. It's just a bunch of people that do weird things, such as um. USA. USA. I'm kind of on board with Obi's line of thinking. I see people like, that's cool, but then I think about it, I'm like, okay, so they just learned how to walk on ice real fast. <laughs> I mean, like... really, why do I care about somebody, some guy that's, you know, six foot tall and wearing a the tightest Speedo I've ever seen a man wear in my life and going 150 miles an hour on a sheet of ice? I don't give a damn. If I wanted to see that, I'm going to watch hockey. What does that create? What does that create, Obi? A moose? Knuckle. Moose? Sandwich. No. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, but, but I've been watching the Olympics, uh, Obi. You know, I'm a huge fan of it. One thing I did find myself uh, doing this time watching the Olympics was, one, I was voting for the Jamaican bobsled team. Yeah. And two, <laughs> the three fun. sisters, the, the mogul, the three sisters from Canada. Right. Or just like the cutest things. I, 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 you know, I was gung ho voting for the <laughs> Can I? I'm going to step in here. I'm going to be the wet blanket here. I'm getting a little tired of the. This looks sound lame. The hypersexualization. If if someone's a woman in the Olympics now, they're, you're going to find a picture of them like half naked the next day. Yeah, like, like in like uh, if they're, uh, they're runners, they're actually in freaking bathing suits or freaking half nothing. Well, just, it just, I don't know, I don't want to say What about on a, or on a kind of bobsled with a... Doesn't it? Like, congratulations on being the best in the world. Now, pose now we're going to show you naked. Yes! Yeah. That's, Come that's pose for favorite. Playboy. Well, I mean, to be fair, the, Olymp the, spirits of, the spirit of the Olympics is, it's part pissing contest. Like, in, on one hand, the countries are spitting at each other. But on the other hand, it, it's supposed to be a goodwill type thing, right? Or it's, that's what it's supposed to be. But we are not, not going to get but, into this topic. But, no, but listen, but listen. So what better way to build goodwill than to show every every, every other country your boobies and be like, ooh, those are good boobies. I mean, that's, I mean, few things can unite people other than, like, boobies and music. I mean, boob's a boob, dude. You know that, You've seen one. I'm sorry to say it, and I'm sorry, Matt. Give me one second. I'm... Absolutely. Really, and you got guys that say, oh, all tits are different. Fuck that. No, they're not. A tit is a tit. They're either big, they're either small. They're either fat, they're either skinny. They got big nipples, small nipples, silver dollars, they're round small. dollars. They slim up or they slim down. It's the same. It's a tit. It's a tit. <laughs> some, are, some are also banana shaped. Like the ones from the 80s. Well, you know what I mean. Those... A boob's a boob, man. Okay? <laughs> for those that are actually watching, uh, for those that are actually watching live right next to me, these are what you would call a perfect tit. Okay? That's um, But you got to... Of course, and, and, and so, a bear head sewn on, but still, it's... It, a, t a boob's a boob, man. I don't, I don't understand why people make such a big difference. Oh, my God! Boobs are a, an amazing world of diversity. It's I, I find I'm still stuck <coughs> when I see a new I don't see a new boob. Ever. I like, <laughs> just realized my wife's in the laundry room next to her. Well, no, my I wife. Think, no, uh, well, my wife. You can, you can turn it up. Turn your speakers up if you want to. But my wife, you, you got to think about it. This is what my wife says to me every time. I don't give a f if you look at the menu. As long as you don't order nothing to eat. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, mean, I, I say, get to I look at boobs all day long and she doesn't care. As long as I don't rub it in her face and go, Baby, look at those boobs, they're huge. You know, I don't do that shit. And she's, she doesn't <laughs> care. She knows I'm looking. I did. And, yeah. You know that <laughs> thing, happy, her. happy wife, happy life? Yeah, she wasn't happy. I wasn't having a good day. <laughs> all needs to be said but, 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 uh, but overall, <laughs> when it comes to sex appeal in the olympics you know you're talking about showing skin and stuff i've found it on these olympics like uh like, say like the, the girls of age say like when they're at the top of the ski thing and they got on the cute goggles and and they, they you know the, the little cute pretty lips that they have I, I think that the sex appeal is just there you know just like like the european blondes to yeah you know, I, I don't think it takes skimpy bathing suits and posing magazines things like that I, yeah i think Ooh. the sexiness sells just 
I think the sexiness is the talent. And is the talent? <laughs> but, but if you yeah. notice, Matt, like, 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 like how cute their lips are. With, I mean, no, just that's uh, creepy, dude. I, I, I mean, just look how cute <laughs> that the girls are. You know, just just wearing you know the helmet and, and the goggles. It's just. I can just see Sean in hey, room. Freeman, do you need a do you need a flashlight, man? Cause you're digging <laughs> I, I, a I, hole I really fucking deep, dude. I'm gonna back. I'm gonna back up Sean. I'm gonna save Sean. I, I do agree. There's more to them than the, the boobs. I actually like shapely legs, and a lot of them have shapely legs. Like, not, I don't like the really muscular ones. I like the ones that are thick, but not like like diesel. Like they're gonna crush you between their legs. That's scary. Where are you and going, boy? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Wal crushing walnuts between the thighs. Like, how are you like this? Yes, yes. this way, ma'am. Mm, okay, sorry. These are Russian thighs. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, you guys remember, before, we'll leave the Olympics uh, at this, on this note, but you guys remember in the Summer Olympics, there was this one girl, um, it was, I think she was representing Australia, she was like uh, one of the, I don't know, she ran one of the track and field uh, events, a few of them, and uh, she had like the, the, the most winningest smile ever, like, uh, I forgot what her name was, something, ne Nemke or something, you guys remember the time while, yeah, the brunette, yeah, yeah. yeah, Angela Nemke, I think her name was, now she was a real cutie. Yeah. And it was really her smile. I mean, before I saw the boobs, you know, which well, I never knew there were boob shots, but her smile was definitely winning. Well, taking it well, back. I, 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 sorry. No, I was, I was just going to ask one question. When it, when it comes to sports, you, you've got the manless men watching football, right? But, but the only way to get men to watch sports is it's got to be some, it's got to be men watching sweaty men because men watching hot chicks play soccer doesn't work. <laughs> what? What? Why, playing why? tennis is good though. Yeah, oh. yeah but, but still. Or volleyball. It's not like, Beach you know, volleyball. Absolutely. Mm. The only way to be successful in a sport is mm. men watching men. So think about that, guys. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'd rather. Yeah, that's, that's what I think about when I'm watching sport. Ooh, sausages. See, like the Swedish soccer team in Umbros is a. Uh, you would think that would be more successful than some burly dude yeah. sweating. I, I think the hot dog eating contest is probably the sexiest sport. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> real quick. You what I'm saying, Matt? While, while you guys are, while we're talking and everything, I just want to come in real quick. While you guys are talking, kind of boost up your mics a little bit. we got people that can't hear you. Sure. There we go. So, but but anyway, keep going. Original point, just kind of maybe as a capper. Um, I think what I'm getting pissed off is, is we had some really good performances by some women skiers and uh, whatnot. Um, but the main thing seemed to be, oh, look how hot they are. Uh, hey. Congratulations on being hot. And like, no, how about we congratulate them on training for their life and having a huge accomplishment instead of sex sells. Jumping. Sex sells. I understand, but I, that, that doesn't mean I can't be mad at it. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that they're not going to keep doing it and say they're not going to laugh at you and call you a queer because you're not does, liking it. OB, I, I, when I say it, it's going to happen. I'm writing the Olympic Committee after we after this program. Okay. All I'll make sure I send my paragraph to you. Who watches Olympics to get off when you got Google right next to you? Let me tell you something. Duh. And then, and then we're going to move on to the rest of the news Tumblr. so we can finally get to zombies. Yeah. I but I'm going to say this. The only difference between how women are objectified and men there's I, I know plenty of women that look at the guys with the tight shorts and they say and they are no noticing their package or the nice buttocks mm. the only thing is that women are a buttocks. lot more dis buttocks you know i like those buttocks now i'm sorry i'm latino sometimes i have a little swing in my in my <laughs> but listen but the yeah. women are just more discreet about it that's all maybe maybe i think they do you know, it on I know sex sells. Um, I'm talking more about the, the immediate pictures that go up when a woman wins something in the Olympics on Facebook. I, I All of a sudden, Facebook's wall is like, now here's them posing. <laughs> I know what you're saying. Like, Do we need that? Like, that's but, not. But it drives traffic. Coverage. It drives yeah. traffic. You get the clicks. Absolutely. You get the ad. You know? That's what. I that's understand what works. why. I'm just saying, I just don't. I don't like that trend. I know. I, I agree. And I, I, I super enjoy women. <laughs> <laughs> don't no, I'm women. with you. <laughs> but so look at it this way, that might be the initial hook, and then it might actually, because they they came to look at boobies and booty and legs and nice smiles or whatever they, that they like, then they, yeah. they'd see it, the athleticism and appreciate that part. Because yeah, honestly, a lot of those events people won't look at to begin with unless they saw that, and, oh, she's pretty, oh, wow, she's pretty good, oh, look at, wow. And then but I'd be like, Matt, oh, she's a good athlete. 
So, but, but, but would you guys agree to this? Because you know you've got people say like the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, right? Mm. No one watches the reality show for them. Me too. They make like they make like eighteen dollars a game. Eighteen dollars a game. What? Right? Oh, because they get so many deals probably out of that. Because you know they sell you know off of photo shoots, calendars, yeah. and things like that. So what do you think? Some of these Olympic people, some of them get sponsors, but. It, what is in it an Olympic career pay wise? Oh, yeah. You, know, you, you might have to go to, to like FHM magazine. Yeah. And, and pose in the cotton. You know, not nude photos. But, so, what if you're you an know ugly know saying? woman? You're saying you don't have a chance then? In a <laughs> More than likely, if you're ugly, you're not in the Olympics. Plus, <laughs> Think about it. Team. Think about what you well, just you're not, said. You're not in shape. Well, I am thinking of what I said, but. You can you, you can have an saying? athletic I, I, person, but they can be unattractive. Yeah, I've I, seen I, some. I, I, I've seen some really fugly people at the Olympics. <laughs> he brought out the word fugly. Oh, Yogi. Skaters are not. You don't want to see a photo shoot with them. So. That Russian chick was. <laughs> oh my like, god. Like Mary Lou Red, but yeah, you know, I mean she she got every spot, Wheaties and all that. But but I mean, is there pay? I mean, is it? Is a lot of the being an Olympian. I mean, that's what we asked. Maybe that's why they do it. I like how we went from stray dogs to the objectific objectification of women in the Olympics, or just in general. <laughs> Matt, we, just in the Olympics. I like titties, so. You guys are definitely, Matt, Matt and Sean are definitely part of the horseplay crew now, because <laughs> you cannot maintain a focus at all. <laughs> we can't focus, maintain a full uh, conversation, man. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so let's all right, just... All right, let's, what, all right uh, which would win? Women's topless NFL or the regular NFL? Uh, that's a no-brainer. I think I, I, the, the boobies would lose, dude. I think. Oh, I think the boobies would lose because you got Google. People can find anything they want now. They don't have to work for it. You don't need this that's stuff. True. Anymore. You don't need to. Like, but the topless would. People. The topless would stay up afloat. <laughs> it, I hope so. It 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 definitely stay afloat longer. Just than from that. just from I Yogi's know. ticket sales. <laughs> But when it comes to sex appeal, I think almost seeing is better Sorry, than Sorry, <laughs> Like FHM and stuff like, like that. Side yeah. boob, like side boob more than full boob? I like under boob, by the way. Impre Impression. Yeah. Oh, yeah, leaving and leaving uh, more to the imagination. I agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot, like FHM, to me, is a lot of times more sexier than, than Playboy could ever be fully nude. Yeah. Like Ma Maggie, uh, Lauren Co Cohan, she's got some, like, uh, shots oh, oh, oh. under oh. Oh my goodness! We'll talk about that when we talk about. Did you see her? Hello, Google. Did you see her on Conan O'Brien? <sighs> That's uh -huh. one of the, the prettiest girls I've ever seen. Yes. yes. When she was on, when no, when she was on Conan O'Brien in that black and white dress. And it's my even, wife was even like, "Wow!" And it's not even to cop out. It's her smile. She's got a smile that's just like, "Whoa!" I mean, the rest of her is amazing. Don't get me wrong. Oh man, I mean, oh, hey, it's there. But her smile is like, "Whoa!" It's like. <laughs> I'm a man, man, baby. Since, Sorry. Since the main reason, like some episodes that drag on in The Walking Dead, I still watch. But we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, I got a half hour, and I know I've been derailing, so I know it's my fault. But let's talk right. zombies. Well, well, yeah. Let's finish up the news real quick, and then we'll go into zombies. I know. Ah, oh, man. Matt, we don't want to lose you, man. We're having fun. I gotta go to yeah, bed. Yeah, I, I got about a half hour too. I got, I got work at five a.m. You guys are crazy. Is it actually? Is it twelve thirty for you guys as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. We're crazy. All right, so we'll go through the news real quick. So, you know, everybody heard about the whole Flappy Bird thing. So I'm going to skip that. The other thing I'm going to say that's it's, it's funny, uh, like he kind of had a, a Kurt Cobain moment. <laughs> Who's? Uh, the, the developer of Flappy Bird. The, the, yeah. You know, it, I had to br we had to bring it up because Flappy Bird was like trending along with a bunch of other things, which listen, uh, listen. shocked me. Listen to this real quick. Flappy Bird... If you look at trending topics on uh, on different uh you know data aggregators, for Flappy Bird, Jennifer Lopez, Bitcoin ATMs, and Candy Crush were like amongst the top five of things that were trending. I'm like, what the hell? Are, I don't care about any of these things, but why are they like all the buzz on the internet? And, I you know, care about Bitcoin ATMs, by the way. So don't don't speak for me. <laughs> and I care about Candy Crush, so don't speak for there me. There you either. go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I guess I'm in the minority. But anyway, Indie game you know, for the win. Know, I don't know. I just thought the whole thing was funny because he pulled the game off the Android and iTunes markets or whatever because he couldn't take the pressure anymore, lawsuits or whatever. I'm going to skip through that. I know you got to go soon. 
Um, I heard you made a boatload of cash though, but yeah. <laughs> oh, on, on Bitcoin? Yeah. No, no, on a uh, Laffy Park. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin, get on it while you still. <laughs> keep going. Here we go. Give up more updates. All right, all right. We'll keep going. Here we go. So, uh, Doctor Who news. Anybody into Doctor Who? Anybody? Anybody? No. Nobody. No. no. I'm the mm -hmm. only person. G I, have, I am a huge walking, or sorry, Doctor Who fan. Uh, okay. Honestly, I'm not even being sarcastic. And Obi's Fuck. like, this guy is an effing nerd, dude. Oh, well, I am. Oh. Loud and proud. Who's the it's doctor? A... Tales of, of Trenzalore. Have you heard yes. of that? Uh, no. They're gonna do. They're gonna talk more about uh doc the doctor's 300 years on uh, Trenzalore, like when he was on uh in the town of Christmas. Uh, I don't care about that. Is that a comic book or are you talking about in the show? It's gonna be, I believe it's either gonna be a book series, a audio show, or it might, I don't think it'll be a spinoff show. It might be, a, it'd probably be a radio type show. He spent 300 years at Christmas? Yeah. I didn't like, get that. I guess so, yeah, he was super old by the time. Yeah, because he was away from the TARDIS so long. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so interesting. I, you know what, dude, we'll talk Doctor Who back and forth, because I, I, I got a love-hate relationship with that show. Dude, uh, so you know what? I'll be a future discussion. We'll uh, maybe we'll have a right. Doctor Who episode. And we'll force Obi to watch like, Doctor Who as well. Yeah, that'll happen. I can just tell. <laughs> he looks like a Doctor Who fan <laughs> in the making right there. I think every, every, even, I'm a hard. Yeah, I'll get right on that. And I'm I'm love hate with it as well. But anyway, Doctor Who online is shutting down this month and on February 28th. Apparently, didn't do that well. Uh, it was too cartoony for some people. Um, also, there's a speculation that the show might come back early for the summer, instead of in uh, the f instead of fall. Uh, cool. Pretty neat. And on Saturn News, uh, Chris Barry, one of the directors of, you know, 16 years worth of uh, Doctor Who, on and off, died at age 88. It's kind of sad. Uh, lose one of the legends there. But he was uh, Chris Barry was also one of the first people that worked on the very first Dalek episodes. But anyway, I'll move on from. Uh, Doctor Who. Actually, one more Doctor Who thing. For Wait, those... are you are you a fan of the old Doctor Who they got rolling in now? Yes. Yeah. We're, okay. we're, we're not, you know what? We have to talk off, offline, man. Let's okay, just... we'll talk offline. These guys are like... Uh... Maybe we'll do a bonus episode. Uh, Obi's like... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Anyway, they have a robot dog on Doctor Who called K-9. I'm not going to say anyone remembered K-9, because obviously the only Matt will, uh, from the original series. Uh -huh. uh, especially mm -hmm. my, my favorite Doctor, uh, Tom Baker. But uh, apparently now this company's developing robotic pets. All right, <laughs> well, we went away from Doctor Who, I promise. But it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be a real thing now. Having robot pets, kind of neat. Nice. Oh, nice. There's actually working prototypes. There's one that can throw cinder blocks at people. Oh man, I can't wait. That coming at me. <laughs> Get off my lawn. <laughs> I want a robot pet. I want a robot dog that can say snarky remarks like canine from Doctor Who. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, also, more more tech news. Uh, the real life Iron Man suit in development. More nerdgasm. It's called uh, the Talos. You guys hear about this? The tactical oh. assault light operator suit. That won't go wrong at all. I know. It's only gonna be a price tag of about three hundred, four hundred thousand well, dollars. Wait, wait, let me, I, let me get my iPad up. I want to see if I can find this. This is not for the consumer market. This is strictly for... Uh, Centric millionaires. So common, the special ops. The military has uh, what they call RFIs, requests for information, for different okay. for bid on the project, bids on the project. They have some mock-ups of it, and it, it looks like... It looks. You, it reminds me of Halo. You guys know in Batman Returns, that black suit that they pull out of a drawer, and then he spray-painted it black? It's that suit right there. Pretty much, yeah. But they're trying to put jet packs and all that other shit on there. I'd buy one. But yeah, Me the too. real life, the real world SOCOM, you know, Special Ops Command it wants to get these into production. They're saying um, 2032, maybe sooner, who knows. I, I think it's going to be sooner. 2032. You think it'll be sooner than that? It's only a few years away. <laughs> yeah, true. I'm... I'm Look at my eye. <laughs> Another thing that I think is newsworthy for all of us podcasters, uh, Stitcher came out with a patch, version 3.16, and it's going to be great for our listeners because they address an issue where when you put Stitcher in the background on an Android device that's pre-Honeycomb, the Stitcher uh, radio station would just shut off. Yeah, it don't so work. It so, now, here, so now you can listen to your Stitcher, favorite Stitcher radio station, favorite podcast, 
while you're doing whatever you do, while you're watching porn, you know. Uh, Listen <laughs> while we work. <laughs> do, 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 do. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna skip the rest of these. I know I have some other stuff. I'll, I'll just leave it for next uh, episode. I commend you. I commend you, though, Yogi. You're prepared. I like that. Thanks. I try. I try. And you guys, you guys, this guy, <laughs> and that guy. He's like, prepared. what are these guys? Prepared. This guy? <laughs> he's gonna be like, cool guy. he's gonna be like all these yeah. guys. <laughs> all right. Oh, the meat of this show. <laughs> we will be right back after it's gonna be like 30 seconds. Literally, I'm just gonna play a little intermission music. We'll be right back with the feature for this play show. This, this, this play show? Yeah, this week's show, The Walking Dead Season 4 reactions and predictions from our cast right here. We'll see you guys in a minute. Really, really even, man. Welcome back to <laughs> Horseplay Episode 10 <laughs> Brains and Fried Paprika, the feature of today's podcast Smoked Paprika. Brains and Smoked Paprika. Obi, that's the name of the show. <laughs> sure. <laughs> It's a, okay. It's a very good so, what we're going to be feature sure, bacon. Walking Dead Season 4. Now, I want to get your guys's. I know you guys have been keeping up with it, and I am sorry I haven't been. But, like I said before, this brain's been through so much shit that it's not going to remember anything an hour after we stop. So, talk away, guys. What do you guys think is going to happen? Oh, we're doing predictions. Well, Reactions and predictions. I know we're, we're limited on time, so I'm gonna get bring up some of the key points here. Says and then we'll... God, I don't know. <laughs> oh, what are you doing, sir? Uh... <sighs> I want to say this real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna open up by saying that I haven't kept it with. I don't remember the comic that well. Yeah. And I skipped around a lot in the comic, but I know that in the comic they killed off less main characters than they have in the show, and I feel like on the show to make up. For some yes. of the slower moving stuff, they're killing off more people. So you're you're saying they kill off more in the comics than they do in the show, right? No, vice versa. Because Herschel no. lived longer in the comic, um, and Sophia lived longer in the comic. It didn't yeah, feel... but um, no, they, they, it it is a slaughterhouse in the comic books. Um, oh, I know, I know, I know. Carl gets his face blown off and everything. No, I mean in the comic books, the the original prison scene, Lori was still alive. There is a whole panel with her getting shot with her baby, a shotgun to the stomach. Brains. And like half the Herschel family dies in the prison scene. I think they're being pretty protective of their cast. Yeah, like I think they're in a tough position where they've got so many beloved characters now that to now dig into like the core, core group is genuinely going to piss people off. Like Herschel will yeah. piss people off. But like there's some untouchables now. Like you get rid of Daryl, you're going to have like a petition. The next day, you oh, get rid yeah. of yeah, like thousands of land. people. Yeah, you'll get more people voting on that than like on their own president or prime minister. Oh, like. yeah, for sure. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn and Maggie are also on touch. Well, maybe Glenn not so much because people secretly want Maggie, so they're like, oh, yeah, that dies. But I'm you giving comic spoilers, by the way. Someone is a spoiler. Alert. Yeah, I'm giving comic spoilers, but these are like three, four year old spoilers from the comic books, so yeah, I'm not yeah. Too concerned right now. Yeah, but I still feel like uh, they need at this point they're in a, they're they're at a place where they need to introduce new characters and really ease them into the show. You let us get attached to them so that there could be a sense where there's expendable. Because it, it feels like the past couple of seasons, especially, there's been people introduced and then killed off right away. So it's like you don't feel any. There's no longer an emotional attachment. So it's kind of like okay, yeah, you kill somebody and figure up. You know, people die. Yeah, like everyone who came from. Um... What's it's nuts? Uh, what's the place the governor looks after? I what's can't remember the name for some reason. Woodbury. Woodbury. All those people are dead now. We were talking about this on yeah. ZombieCast. Like, moving to the prison was the worst thing any of them could have done because now they're all dead. Either the flu 
or the prison break. Now I'm gonna be like, uh, when as soon as I see this, I'm gonna be like, don't go in there, don't go in that prison, you're gonna die, bitch. Sorry, oh, this is gonna be riddled with. But you're back to your point, and uh, I'll shut up because I want because Sean's very passionate about Walking Dead. Uh, they introduced three that potentially main characters on the very last episode. Yes. At the very end. That were straight uh, from the comic issue 53, the cover. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, that was I'm really very good. Excited. I, I, yeah. I don't know what to expect, Matt. I. Well, I got burned for talking about this last time, so I'm just going to say they're going down a very cool path now if they're bringing in these characters. But it's leading up to my favorite part of the entire franchise, so uh, these well, characters. I, I think that, I will say this, I think they're taking more creative liberty with the show versus the comic, which is good, because you wouldn't want it to be an exact regurgitation of the comics. So that's right. good. And... Um, we're getting into that whole to that whole part, cause that's that's like the la la last episode we saw. Man, there's so much stuff to talk about. Let, let's bring it to you, Sean. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about real quick, they kind of brought a big focus on the infamous little shoe. Do you think this is a non-important factor, or is this some kind of foreshadowing, or was it more the reason it became a factor was because the, it was Beth that found the shoe, right? If I'm the first, he first saw, saw the shoe. Yeah, mm -hmm. saw the shoe. On you the think she just overreacted because she thought it was someone else? I don't know. You know, uh, you know, the the Walking Dead is good for going down these paths, leading up to things like the shoe, and never giving answers for it. You know, you open the door, and as we see on the zombie cast, there's a brick wall there, and it, it's just left dead from now on. So, I, you know, I don't know if if they were connecting that scene you know to where they were overdubbing the scenes you know like uh you know where tyrese was and, and where daryl and beth had been you know they, they, like with the bunny rabbits and the shoes so i don't i don't know if they were just so one together like like remember this or watch yeah. out but i i don't know what the shoe had to do with anything do you matt no, but Yogi's right. It seemed important. Like, they lingered on it long enough to be like, we're supposed to say, oh, it's the shoe. This is important. It, it, it was more than a cutaway shot, so. Exactly. I so just don't know what it would be. The one thing but, I will say but, is that. But, that, but that's like the rats at the prison. You know, who, who's who's feeding the zombies? But who's that's, feeding the that's, zombies? Oh, we know who that is now. Yeah, that, that's that, the creepy, segue. Creepy girl. Creepy. Lizzie. But, girl. But, yeah, but. That's going to have a payoff, though. <laughs> Sorry, Obi. Is it? Is it going to have a payoff? <laughs> all right, it already is. Because that's all going to tie together because we're yeah. going to find out what Lizzie's been doing. Yeah. And by, for the record, I think... I, I don't know about you guys, but I knew she was batshit crazy from the beginning. When she started naming the zombies and playing with them, like that girl... I'm Team Lizzie, dude. Back oh, God, they're Team Governor and Team Lizzie, bro. I love you, man, but you're killing me. No, but... Sean, Sean's on team kill everybody to survive a zombie apocalypse. Uh, he doesn't understand the meaning of a zombie apocalypse or what you're supposed to be doing. Sean just wants to throw everyone under the bus and survive. Make right, sure yeah. I, I make sure make sure if I see your ass if I make sure if I see you coming down the road and we're under a zombie I'm gonna shoot your ass in the head before you get to me, Sean. Sorry. But you and, you Have and a Sean good day. Be on the same team. That's all right. All right. Before we go into the shit stalk and we know where this always goes, Obi. <laughs> We've been having a long-standing debate on every show that we get together on or every chat that we get together on, and it's never yeah. going to end. But let's take it back to when to where you're at because you're close to the end of season two-ish, right? So you're you, – did you get to the farm yet? Damn it. I thought you, you said you hit the season title two. sequence of the first episode. Do you know what this show is about? All right. All right. All right. So <laughs> let's take it way back. Yeah. Shane, do you like Shane versus Rick? Please tell me no. So are you an idiot or are you a smart response? Which one's Shane and which one's Rick? Shane is the douchebag that slept with Rick's wife. Shane's a fucking dickhead. He needs to be shot yes! in the head. This guy. This guy right here. I'm sorry. One. Okay, now I'm going to say something say on this. No, 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 you're not caught up on the show, so lay it down. Like, lay it down, bro. No, That's I'm, I'm going to say this. something for this. <laughs> okay. Now, I do understand. Yeah, and it's a, zo it's a zombie apocalypse. I do understand that... You know, you thought your husbands would, you know, they both thought, okay, everybody says, well, we thought you were dead. Wake up in a hospital, and all you see is nothing, nobody's around, and you wake up from a however long coma that he was in. Mm -hmm. That's going to be weird enough. Well, then you don't have your wife and your kid. 
Meanwhile, your partner's up in the hills banging your wife and being your kid's dad. Listen. Listen. No, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's, that's, it's, that's what I'm getting, that's what I'm getting to, though. I understand that they all thought he was dead. So if it's understandable if they're going to, you know, hey, uh, you know, that was his partner. Um, now, on the other hand of it, I think from the time I first seen that guy in the damn show, I think he wanted his wife anyway. Yep. Absolutely. So it's kind of like, you know, hey, he's dead now. You're mine, you know. And then she wasn't she wasn't saying no. She was fucking broken open and say, "Hey, come get some big boy." She wasn't saying no and well, now now hold on, Yogi, one more thing and I'll stop. But now I'm to the point where I just it was a couple episodes ago, but now to the point where he's trying to say, you know, "Hey, you know, you know, what about us?" And he's like, "My husband's back, dude. We there is no us." And now he's pissed. Hey, See, this is where I think it's that freaking douchebag's gonna get fucking eight or something. Well, yeah. see, let me tell you this. I need to I'm go watch. Spoil, I'll see you guys later. I'm not gonna spoil that aspect for you. But I'm gonna say one of the things they did that is very beautiful with Shane is that they built up a huge history there, and they they made you not realize behind. Look at these guys in the chat. <laughs> the chats get out of control. <laughs> but uh, they're troll. They're just having fun. The crazy guys. Hey, go go handle the movie. Lay, lay down the law. But uh, I like I really like what it did with the character development, and I hope they continue that trend because, you know, I think really the more you we see about Shane, the more we know that there's no more speculation. He's been the guy all along that's been trying to make Rick look like he's incompetent. You know, he's always been the guy that oh your your heat is broken, your hot water heat is broken. I'll fix it for you, buddy. And under this guise of being the best friend and just trying, oh, I'm just trying to help you out, brother. No, he was trying to impress the girl <laughs> and make him. Liked. And every time they went out and he left, that they left uh, was you said Shane was the dickhead, right? Yeah. yeah. Shane would make sure that I'll keep him safe. I'll keep him safe. I'll do this. I'll do this, and I'll do this. So you're looking like you know. Uh, yeah. What's his other? What's his He's name? Undermining him at every turn. Every exactly. in everything he was doing, even even when the guy got shot, when he actually pulled up in the beginning, okay, when he got shot, he pulled up his shotgun. If you guys watched, go watch episode. I think it's it's one again. He puts the shotgun down, and then puts it back up after his partner got shot. Yep. Come on, man. Yep. You're just you're just trick. you're blatantly. Yes, everybody that is watching this, I am drinking a fucking two liter of Mountain Dew, and I don't care. Yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Do the do. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it's you know, not. Honest... It's actually brought. Um, never mind. But what's cool about it is when they've done everything up till now, I think they've set the stage by finding mm. us bigger douchebags to hate. So it, now it's we're at a point where it's like where who can we hate more than everyone we've met to this point? I mean, what could be the conflict? What needs to be resolved? What what will be their challenge going forward? So that's where things get interesting, right? Yeah, I agree. And, and and I think you know Shane and then the guy who comes after. I think those are just testing the group. Now I think the the real challenge is going to come up around the bend, and that's going to be for all the marbles. And I think. I read an article somewhere. The show needs to have an endpoint somewhere because it's, mm. it's in real danger of just rambling on yeah. and walking through a forest for the next five years. It needs to have, you know, we're gonna cut it off in the comics here, and we're just gonna go for like ninety, uh, because okay. most shows, most shows like that, they end up being too popular for their own good. They're on the air too long, and and then they, they fizzle away. away. They fizzle away into nothingness. Like they just kind of. Yeah. Well, I think it needs to run its course. I mean, it just needs to. There's been a couple of shows out like this that actually, it, they did it. Thing they did everything. They got near the end, or they got to their their safe haven, or they did whatever. They got underground, or they got to the ship, or they got wherever it was, or they got right. to outer space, and then it's over. Just be done. Don't keep making yeah. remakes and ep more be, episodes be and more. Be Breaking Bad. Be comfortable in that you told the story, and that you probably could have sold more ads for the next three years and had another <laughs> job for the next three years, but. They have the confidence to say, "This is where we're stopping." And mm -hmm. that's, you got to respect shows that do that, and you love them longer because you remember them. Right. Well, you know? and one that one that me and my wife watch, uh, that's it's on its last season now, um, but it's How I Met Your Mother, 
which is no oh, yeah. nothing with zombies, but it's still they they yeah. stopped it, you know. And now they did this last season, but anyway, anyway, zombie talk. It's <clears throat> though that went on a long time. How I met your mother. Yeah, but that was a good show. You know, the 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 biggest womanizer in the show isn't actually he's actually gay. So you know whatever. <laughs> oh, um, Barney. Love Neil Patrick. Or, not Neil Patrick. Harris. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. I love that guy. Yeah, he's yeah. cool. But anyway, I I got a question for you guys then, and this will be a quick a quick question to keep things moving along. From where each of you guys are at, and I, and now sounds you guys each off. Um, from where you're at on the show. Oh, be stop it. What, how much longer do you think for see this show? How many seasons do you see the show going for? From where you're at, seeing how much has developed the pacing of it, and you know, between choose all right, give me two answers if you want. Like, well, how long you'd like it to last as a fan, and how long you think it needs to last so that it's finalization and it doesn't just end in mediocrity. So, Obi, you started off where you're at right now in the show. Well, I'm how like long I do said. You think you could run? Um, well, I kind of have a little, um, I have to admit something to you guys. Um, season four came out, started playing, so I've been watching those episodes. So catching up with season one and two and then watching season four as it's going. So I kind of know what you guys are talking about. Yeah, exactly. So I really think from right now in the, the season that it is right now, I think maybe one more season to where they have to get that final push to wherever you know up in the mountains or you know way up in canada or way down you know wherever they'll be you know (laughs) safest you know they'll make that final push and then be done i'd like it to go i'd like it just to i yeah i think another year but i'd like it to go a couple because i actually like it so wow so season five that you think you'll end on obi maybe five or six i think six would be the 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 ceiling for me i can't see them rehashing the same old we found some place safe but it's not safe because of this we found some place safe but it's not safe because of this and then and that's why the, i said like season five and yeah. six they do that final push to that that final that final home front yeah you know how about you sam what do you think how, how long do you think they got sorry i had to step away uh, how long for what how long how many seasons do you think uh walking dead has left Vers- all right, so to give us two answers. How long you'd like it to last, and how long you think it really has before the show really runs out of plot twists and real substance. You know, I, I, I hear a lot of debates about The Walking Dead. Uh, me being a fan of The Walking Dead, uh, it, if I can't catch it Sunday night, it you know, I, by Tuesday, I have seen it. That's a fact, because I'm that interested in it. So I, I think that... With every day that you get up and go to work, you you create in real life a new story. So I think it's endless, man, with The Walking Dead. I think it's it's the sky's the limit with it. You know, if they keep it creative, uh, you know, th- there's a lot of stories in, in a library. So uh, you know, if the creativity well, stays, if the creativity you, is continuously, sorry, Matt, but if the see, creativity is continuously rerun. And if not just rerun, redone, but tweaked a little bit here, tweaked a little bit here, that's going to get old really, really fast. There is no I mean, sky's I, limit in any episodes. I don't care what I you say. Still watch, I still watch new seasons of Road Rules. Mm-hmm. 20 years <laughs> into it. I mean, so... Yeah, but, but see, that's, that's a, a total different... Though. That's a total different show. I mean... But it, ke- but it keeps me interested. But here's the thing. A- that's where the spinoffs come into play, that the Walking Dead spinoffs out there are starting to develop... That's where you can explore different stories in this post-apocalypse. But for these batch of characters, I don't want them to be stretched out to their limit. I mean, in the comics, they had that problem. And especially now, in the same timeline in the comics, mm-hmm. there was a bunch of time. Like, it was just like, uh, what do we do with them now? They were just going from event to event, not really having any meaningful impact. And then they got into another big story. So I don't want the show to do that. I want the show to have a very specific end date in mind and i want other shows to come out other walking dead shows like they're doing to maybe pick up and tell us those other creative stories because i will watch those all right guys i'm gonna i'm gonna cap off this discussion at that particular part of our discussion 
with a, a quote that I think you guys might find interesting. I want to see if you guys agree or disagree with this, all right? Disagree. This is from uh, Screen <laughs> This is from ScreenCrush.com, and what, it's an article where they compare the Walking Dead comics to the show. But more specifically, if you don't read the comics, or you haven't read them, or you don't plan to, whatever, wherever camp you're in, it's, it's important because they talk about some of the flaws of the show in itself, not just compared to the comics. Which is, it's very interesting. And I think we're all fans here, and we're all pretty hardcore about it. But we see the flaws. So here's the quote, all right? The very nature of television writing means that we can't spend five minutes talking about anything mundane. So the day in life viewpoint that makes the nothing is happening. Oh, wait, wait, wait I skipped ahead. Makes the comic so compelling is replaced by a false sense of urgency. Sorry, I skipped ahead. Hmm. All right. So the, the day in life viewpoint that makes the comic so compelling is replaced by a false sense of urgency. All right. They're talking about the pacing. The next thing we have to say is even when nothing is happening, the show acts like it's in a hurry. It all feels so lost in translation. Now, I feel, and, and this is where I want, where I want you guys to chime off, you know, if, agree or disagree, I feel like the show does feel rushed sometimes. There might be some aspects where they could stretch it out a little more so that they build the climax. And then there's some parts where it feels like they're just rushing things. Like, um, I, I personally feel like Robert Kirkman's biggest flaw is that instead of creating the emotion and letting the, the actors carry the characters and the emotions and, and stating the situation, he has to sp straight out just have the characters speak it out like in dialogue and stuff. And it's kind of mm. stupid. Like, I feel like they're, they're rushing certain things like, oh, I'm angry about this rather than showing the, the emotional t turmoil. And I think that's, that's part of the essence of the show is, is, is having that, the dynamics between the characters and the, the struggles between the different types of personalities and whatnot. So what do you think? Do you think that... Is the false sense of urgency like that? Maybe the rush, the pacing is off. Do you think the pacing is too fast, too too slow? You know, given what we just said. Well, Sean, Sean, you talk about this, so you go first. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, you took the time to pose a great question. Uh, the pacing of the show. Do you think it it yeah. lingers too much, or do you think they could build more? What's yeah, I, I like it. Uh, I, I gotta say, the mo the biggest complaints of the uh, of it, you know, we'll say recent times is when you're present on the show. And in season two, which was recent times as we were watching it, I had complaints that it was slow. But I've come to find out I've liked the character building, mm -hmm. and I love season two. You know, whenever I go back and watch it now. I think it, the Debbie Downer season two was waiting week to week. But when you go back and watch it as a complete season, yeah. in marathon form, it's a great season. Which I think this season, you know, where we had the virus and, the, you know, the whole governor thing, I think they're getting into, a, you know, like we've talked about on Zombie Cast, the last two episodes have been pure feeling to me. But, you know, because it's it's not the prison, it's not the governor. It, it, it's it's the last two episodes have been survival, nothing more, survival. But you're seeing all the characters thrust out of their safety zone. You're seeing who they are when they don't have a prison to retreat to. Mm -hmm. That's what I find great about the last two episodes, um, and that's why I I didn't like season two is because they were safe and there's no immediate danger. They were on this farm, they're relatively safe. Now I find like the characters, they're panicked. Every scene, they're they're facing a new challenge. They're trying to, you know, make peace with the fact that they don't have a safety zone anymore. They're trying to hook up with one another. They're dealing with the fact that maybe their loved ones are gone. So I love the last two episodes. I know you do too, Sean. Um, I, I, but I love the way they're handling it. Can they do that for the next five episodes? No, but the first two, I'm certainly into it. I think season two definitely... I think season two didn't, doesn't get the credit it deserves because it wasn't so much zombie survival. It was just post-apocalyptic survival. And it was more about mm. the uneasy alliance. Because remember, Herschel wasn't sold on having all those guests at first. He knew mm -hmm. all things were going to go to crap. You know, he knew that taking out more people, as much of a Christian man he was, he knew helping more people also meant putting his family at risk. And family comes first, you know. And it, and he ended up being right, unfortunately. But everybody grew onto him, and they became part of his extended family. Mm -hmm. So they set the stage for a lot of things, you know. And also, don't forget all the derpiness from, you know, Shane <laughs> and Andrea that sets up this own conflicts. Because, you know, I mean, Andrea, you know, to show off, she almost snipes one of her own people. Come on now. I mean, mm. is you know. Almost. There's, there's, I'm not going to say any more about it. I mean, she <laughs> needs to get back in the kitchen. Get the gun out of but, your hand. 
but you know, I think there's there's two parts, two sides to to The Walking Dead. There's the the human conflict and then the zombie conflict, and I think there needs to be a balance of both for the for the, the pacing to be good. If it's all pure zombie scares and you know running away from zombies, it's gonna get old. But if they sprinkle in the human element more, I think they'll be they'll be fine for you know two or three seasons. And then we brought it back. We brought it back. Hey. So, so you did watch the last episode or or, or the last two episodes, right, Yogi? Oh yeah, and Obi did too, right? I thought you said you had to watch the last two episodes of season four. DVR, man. Oh. I'm, I'm, All I'm saying, Carl, I'm watching them. In a bedroom, and cool. one zombie draws excitement that I like. And, and, yeah. I, and also, I want to say, guys, I just got a message from the Zombie Life podcast, which is great. Uh, the author of Frequency, Eddie Rotten, is listening live on the feed and said, Great job Eddie. us talking the zombies on Horseplay. So I think, yeah, yes. Sweet. Thanks, thanks for listening, Mr. Uh, Eddie Rotten. Thank you very much, Eddie. Appreciate that very much. Zombie Life Podcast, check it out. And and I'm just going to kind of break right here for a second because we do have a question, and uh, this guy's been with us the whole time. Um, anyone's opinion, and this is for anybody, on the and the impact of reading comics before the show, does it make the experience better or worse? I, I, uh, yeah, I'm not up to date on the, on the comics. Uh... Yeah, I'm not a fan of comics, but I gotta say, the, the comics are very interesting. You know, it's and and it's almost the same kind of question that um you know should you read the book first before you watch a movie? Um, my I think wife. The comics are far better than my, the TV show. Right, my well, my wife. Roger, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I, I'm just saying I, I think that the comics are far better than the TV show, if that's believable. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of comics. I don't like comics. But I absolutely love, uh, you know, like the first 50, 60 uh, issues th that I read uh, way back when. I mean, it's uh, if you think the TV series is good, just pick up, you know, the first five comics. You, know, you probably go download them somewhere uh, for pretty cheap. Okay. But it's... Uh, what about you, man? I mean, does it, is it, is it, you know, it's not like they really ruin each other. It, it might define who someone is, like, you know, about Abraham uh, a little more than me, but but it doesn't mean that it's going to be Abraham in the comic. Well, like I so, said in chat, it, 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 it gives amazing nods to the comics, but it's its own beast. So reading the comics gives you that background information, um, and I think it, it, is, it adds a nice little... Yeah, just substance to the show because, you know, the show honors the comics. They're not trying to be not the comics. They're just trying to tell their own story. But the characters are exactly the same, so you can get better insight, I think. Right. And, and if you read the comics, you know, a, a lot of people uh, that I've heard with the reviews and you, you see a, a lot of recent articles of people, you know, they're wanting more zombies, wanting more zombies, wanting more zombies. <laughs> and the first thing that you find out, the, the close connection – that the TV series and the comic do have together is mm -hmm. that, that it's about the people. It's not about the zombies. It's, it's mm -hmm. about the people. The Walking. Yeah, they're dead. the Walking Dead. They're the. Yeah. That's what it's named after. And, yeah. and and if you read the comic, you know, it, it's not a zombie story. It, it's a survival story in the zombie apocalypse. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. And, and, and that's true to both, right, man? I, I think they both. Yeah. Kind well, of they make a huge point of it. Mm -hmm. There can be whole comic books where you don't see a single zombie. Right. Yeah. What was that? Were you drinking like uh, spit now? <laughs> no. <laughs> the one Ting. thing I would say, the one thing I would warn people about is, uh, if you could treat the two separate, you know, like the, the show and the comics as separate things, like you could use, you, it can help you. The comics can help you backfill some of the sto the the holes that will not ever be filled by the show because a lot of things you could do in in uh, written format in that medium where there's a comic graphic novel book whatever don't work in tv because people are impatient and they want instant gratification so we get a lot of the reason why the pacing of the, of the show is different mm -hmm. but uh something sometimes when you wish you understood why there were certain kind of feelings between people or people do act certain ways you know mm -hmm. and had a little more backstory more appreciation and stuff Rather than it being just crammed into a few minutes and it's like, oh, okay, I guess that's believable because you told me I should believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's a good point, too. I, I you know, do it. I, you can find the comics in, like, compendiums now. Or just get them from the library. They're uh, they're an easy read. They're a fast read. Yeah. yeah you know, the, 
Go to Barnes and Noble. Uh, yeah, most Barnes and Nobles have a Starbucks. And, and get the like I said, <laughs> get, get the thick yeah. book and, and go get you a Starbucks and, and just just go to town reading for free. And enjoy yeah. you know the, the free time that you have with, with the comic. It, 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 Matt, you know, you learn right off bat. I mean, it's, it doesn't take a while to get sucked in. It starts off with the zombie apocalypse, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. And there's like uh, six um, volumes of the comic so far, right? Well, uh, they're up uh, to like 115 individual, but in terms of volumes, it's 20. Yeah. Really? They're up to 20 already? Well, 20, there's different <laughs> types. The, there's ones that carry like six issues each that look like... I mean, the fat ones. The fat ones. Well, these are the ones I get, and they're like five comics per thing and there's 20 oh, okay, of these. that's the small one yeah yeah the fat ones i think there's like four or five these ones i like because the covers are really cool yeah 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 Th and those are worth be worth more than the, than the you know it depends if you want to catch up or if you want a collector's item those are going to be worth more obviously the collector items i'm gonna the... sell mine soon <laughs> <laughs> unless you like bent the, the, the binding a lot and even then yeah in the zombie <laughs> apocalypse if you have one of the last copies it'll, it'll be worth a lot mm. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, Matt and Matt's you. like, well, I got six copies. I'm gonna make some bank. <laughs> I could be the king of the apocalypse with my Walking Dead comics. Yes. <laughs> All right, hey, I gotta books, get to bed. Books will have value. Oh, so you gotta get going, man. So yeah, let's I mean, do... yeah. books and bottle caps. Yeah, let's yeah. Do, let's do this because I know we have a lot more to talk about. I mean, I had like 20 different uh, talking points about talk the uh, uh, Walking sorry, Dead dude. alone. And I also wanted to talk about other stuff outside of the Walking Dead, just uh, zombie things in general. But we'll do uh, this. Maybe we'll do a part two. What do you think, Obi? We'll do a part two, and maybe we'll try to get them back on. Maybe next week. Hey, or so. Well, you know what? Next week, let's just do it right now. Start. Uh, are you guys free next week? I think I can make nah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm. Well, I got to talk to the financial, aka wife committee. <laughs> the boss, uh, yes. I, I believe I am, yes. Uh, because but, but if I have no problem coming back on the horse, but Yogi has been super good to us. Yeah. All right. Let's let's earmark next Thursday for well, part two. Well, uh, well, then we'll just do this instead of um, getting into the news and all that other stuff. We're gonna you know do a few little few little news breaks, and then we're gonna talk mostly everything that we're gonna we're gonna spend at least an hour and a half out of the two two and a half hour show. On zombies next week. Hey, so, and, and, and me and Matt, we're gonna send you guys. You know, we're, we're gonna send you about ten questions. Your favorite movie, and uh, we're, we're gonna bring our questions too. Definitely, favorite yeah. movie, definitely. Favorite, uh, you know, it's everything you zombie. Yeah, your, your personal definition of a zombie. Your personal zombie. Yeah, we're, we're gonna define horseplay on the zombie genre. So we're we're gonna come back <laughs> with uh with questions also. All right. Sounds great. Sorry, guys. I need to. Sorry. I it does. It is okay, I Matt. Uh, you guys make sure that you guys do check out uh, the Matt Fly, Matt Matt O McFly, on Twitter. You guys can check him out, and uh, you always watch him on uh, ZombieCast.net with uh, at Freeman Daddy Five and yeah. Normie Four Seven Seven. No, that's that's Norma's. That's Norma's. What? <laughs> that's Norma's info. Yeah, but I'm so saying, isn't she? She's in Zombie she, Cast too, though. Show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well as well. So, but uh, you guys make sure you get what? Uh, what day is that? So we can make sure that we get uh, for those that don't know what day it is. The Zombie it's, Cast. Uh, Zombie Cast is live at eight o'clock p.m. Eastern every Monday at AllGames.com. We're a part of uh, the All Games Radio Network from the creators of G4 TV. So yeah, okay. it's a huge crowd over there. So come and hang out if you like zombies. Monday nights, eight o'clock p.m. Eastern. But go over to ZombieCast.net uh, and check out our backlog. You know we've had Greg Nicotero, uh, Stephen Young. Uh, we actually had uh, Dave Fenoy, uh, with Zombie Research. You know, tons of good people from the zombie industry. Uh, over on ZombieCast, but uh, yeah, me and Matt, you, you know, we try to bring uh, the top-notch things to ZombieCast, man. But ZombieCast.net is the best place to 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 get in touch with us. Definitely, and um, for those that are are watching the video, um, we're actually the, the the all the information for their their channel will be in the comment down below, um, so you guys can or the description down below i guess you guys make sure you guys leave a comment and make sure you guys hit them up because they want to talk about anything not just zombies that they talk about everything so we really uh yeah we're gonna do some uh a few plugs here um 
Wow. Yeah, brain farted again. Here we go. <laughs> well, actually, uh, Sean, Sean and Matt, did you have any other plugs you wanted to do before you si yeah. uh, sign off? Yeah, I want to plug Matt. <laughs> that's that's for after the show, I thought. That sounds, hey, Matt, yeah. that sounds personal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go, go ahead, Matt. You got uh, where people can find you. Uh, it was funny. Yogi and I were talking today, and Yogi's like, oh, I see you have Guinness on your resume. And he's, he started laughing at me like I was making it up. But no, I actually freelance for Guinness. So if you if you pick up the new Guinness Gamers Edition, I'm in there somewhere. Yeah. And uh, VGO Outsiders Tuesday night. He has a Noah page, but he's in there somewhere. I'm in there. Oh, here. One sec. No, one he's going to find it. Here. Sure. Yeah, I watched the video. The scenes, oh, look, at that's a good shot. That's a sexy picture. Look yeah. at that! Wow, glamorous shot. <laughs> <laughs> sexy. Um, Game Outsiders Tuesday nights, and yeah, I don't know. I live in Barrie. I don't want to. You had that. really epic hair going on there. It was very uh, like medieval, long yeah. flowing hair. Yeah, dude. Hair. Like six months ago, I had hair down to here. I was trying to grow it out. Six months ago, my beard was down to here. I can, yeah, man. Still rocking it though. Still Try, trying to trying. It. It's a little crooked right now. Mm. Yeah. Which you, mat is oh. live? Which What's... I got two mats. What? <laughs> what? I got Twitch up and then the Skype call. You gonna say both live? We're, we're tag teaming you, buddy. That's it. Uh, but uh, Sean's uh, you guys are amazing as well. So yeah. been, you guys are good times. Yep. And you can find me. Uh, I do another show called Knuckle Baller Radio. Still on iTunes and Stitcher, and also live Sunday nights at nine o'clock uh, over at allgames.com, which is kind of like you know, like it's about the any topic cast. And uh, follow me at Freeman Daddy Five on Twitter. Blah 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 blah. blah. You guys Brian make sure you guys blah. send me that uh, that contact information and the show times and dates and all that good stuff, and I'll make sure I put that in the box down below when I uh, make a little video for this. But uh, Yogi. Yes. You got some sign-off thoughts? Yes. Yeah, so before to, I get to the rest for, of the uh, plugs? Yeah, for the next, uh, when we do the part two of the zombie episode, which hopefully will be episode 11, uh, we will get into more of the Walking Dead talk, and by then we'll talk about episode 11. We, didn't even, we barely even scratched the surface of episode 9 and 10. Hopefully right. by then Obi will be caught up, <laughs> so then we can get really delve into it. And then we'll talk about everything oh, zombies. Episodes. So yeah, yeah. So to get that, that to be, yeah, I know it's confusing. So on our, <laughs> our episode, horseplay episode eleven, which should be part two of our zombie talk, we'll we'll delve into more of the, the Walking Dead episode nine and ten, and we'll also delve into episode eleven, which will be out by then. Does that make sense? Oh God, I'm, I'm confusing myself. Yes. Perfect. Okay. After saying that, and we're going to be getting into um, what I want you guys to think about both of you is um you guys play video games of course what is your favorite most favorite video game of all time oh, that that includes zombies in the game Oof. save those answers for next week we oh, really man. want to we really <laughs> want to appreciate everybody for watching and listening any of the music that you guys heard is provided by Technoax on YouTube. It is totally royalty free. You can monetize anything that you guys do. If you guys are looking for some free sound effects, you guys can go to freesound.org and get whatever you need. Um, highlights and, and uh, highlight videos and audio casts of the horseplay, the uncut versions are going to be available on uh, my YouTube page and uh, Yogi Zilla's channel as well. Um, and of course, Yogi Zilla's Twitch page as well. Then that's twitch.tv at Yogi Zilla. You guys make sure that uh, you guys just uh, check us out. <laughs> I, yeah, I lost my spot. What are you doing? I was trying to hold that in. <laughs> Sorry. Over there, man. He's like, hi yeah! Sneeze, man. I was, I was trying to hold a sneeze in until you were done. I didn't Go want ahead, to... Yoki. <laughs> That's yours. All right, so, you know, because YouTube and Google is still going through the shenanigans. For those, our fellow uh, streamers out there, um, and, and even podcasters, if you get if you do video shows, you know, and especially if you plan you to get just... on for YouTube, avoid uh, <laughs> Google's long beat stick. What the hell? <laughs> Go check out a Let's Play that. Check out uh, let's play dot wikia dot com and mm. also hashtag who let's play to see uh, what games are safe to stream and uh, and uh, also look at some royalty free stuff 
uh, and avoid being put on timeout on YouTube and being banned or whatever. And also support our <laughs> indie games. Uh, we had we had a developer from uh, Armada Online join us not too long ago, and we're really big on the indie game scene because they're, they're the ones that are putting out fresh new ideas while everybody else kind of regurgitating the same old crap. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've. Uh, Check out our friends at uh, Game History 101, Knuckleballer Radio, which I mentioned already, and uh, Z- ZombieCast, VG- Video Game o- Outsider, VGO. Sega Nerds, The Gaming of the Shrew, formerly Sega Addicts, RPG Grinders, R9Cast, uh, and the B-Team. Most of those are on all games, and Stitcher, because iTunes doesn't matter. Who cares about Apple stuff? <coughs> Apple Rock! <laughs> <laughs> I love Apple. You know what? Sean makes me want to be an Apple fanboy because his because uh, of his passion. The yeah, I'm getting yeah. an Apple tramp stamp right above my. <laughs> oh oh update, my update, update here or update, update coming it. right above my underwear tag. Uh. Oh, wow. <laughs> anyway, for future episodes and discussions, whether uh, we bring Matt and Sean back, whoever else joins us, uh, for our <laughs> listeners. Make, be sure to check out the zombie blog. Uh, that's an interesting discussion. Uh, some interesting stuff on there. Uh, zombie Research Society, which I think is going to be collaborating with ZombieCast, right? Uh, we're yeah, hoping to. So. Word. Yeah. Um, what else, uh, what's another big one that I want to recommend? Of course, the ZombieCast blog. The Freeman awesome. Daddy. The Freeman Daddy blog. Is that a thing? Stop it. Oh, you, oh, you said the big one. Oh, well, the last Girl, one, of the, one of the last things we do want to let you guys know is if you guys did not get a chance to watch us live or you guys are watching us on YouTube, you guys can listen to us on Stitcher. We are on Stitcher as well as Talk Shoe. You guys uh, just hit us up and um, you can get every episode from there. I believe Yogi gets them uploaded, I believe, the next day or, you know, soon after we're done with the show already. So you guys can get that up. And then even the live feed that we just heard from earlier. So we really appreciate everybody listening. We do want to thank Moto McFly and Free Man Daddy 5. I said, Motto, 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 shut up, Moto. man. You Japanese need to change your name now. to Moto, 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 <laughs> Moto McFly, and Moto. at Freeman Daddy 5 we really appreciate you guys coming on from ZombieCast.net. We'll see you guys next week. Part right, two, part, oh, beyond, did you really just say, oh, beyond X? Oh, by next. <laughs> We'll see you guys next time. You guys, what? Listen. Get to the chopper. Aggie birds. At least you got a flappy bird.